Hello everyone, this is Dominic and the one and only, the legend Tay. No, no <laughs> legend. <laughs> Just a humble servant of the Lord. Okay. That's what makes him a legend, that humility. <laughs> you know, the least of you is the greatest, you know. <laughs> Alright, so today we're going to do one of our first video Bible studies and we're going to do Romans. So we're not going to go through all of it. I'm not even sure how far we're going to get. Maybe one chapter? Yeah, sure. Let's try one chapter. Yeah, we'll try. We'll, we'll see where we'll get to. But I guess we'll read it and then we'll discuss it and yeah. we'll see because I feel like this is a good place to start from because Romans kind of slays out um, how... Actually, do you want to... We can't just read it. Yeah, 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 we're the instruction. Yeah, sure. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Do you want to read it or do you want me to read it? Uh, we can read like a paragraph, paragraph. Okay, cool. Sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, should we, well, let's turn to the Bible. Actually, uh, I highly recommend this. It's called the Complete Jewish Study Bible and illuminating the Jewishness of God's Word. And I wanted this because I'm always trying to get as close to original language as possible since I don't remember it from when I was learning it. And I'm going to relearn it one of these days. But yeah, so right now, just starting, starting as close as possible to it. It's like, yeah. Anyway, are you reading yeah. first? Uh, sure. Okay. So, troubled by conflicts in Rome between Gentile disciples and the Jewish community, Shaul or Paul mm -hmm. focuses in the book of Romans on how God's promises to the people of Israel relate to Gentiles who, <laughs> who have come to faith in Messiah. Mm -hmm. The book written in 57 CE is intended to help them understand the unbelief of many Jews, God's continuing work with Israel, the Jewish roots of the gospel, the full inclusion of Gentiles as children of Abraham or Abraham and the necessity of serving the Jewish people. Yep. <clears throat> so there was a history between the Gentile disciples in Rome and the Jewish community. And many of the Gentiles who came to believe in Yeshua had previously been god -fearers. Gentiles who attended synagogues and lived lives informed by Judaism but did not convert. Some Jews from the synagogues became Messianic Jews, who actually very much appealed to me actually and were part of the same congregations as these Gentiles. In fact, the founders of the congregations may have been Messianic Jews, most likely, yeah. Yet as the Roman congregations grew, so did resentment toward the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. The Roman government regarded the Yeshua movement as a subgroup of Judaism, mm -hmm. and almost certainly regarded Gentile followers of Yeshua as proselytes. 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 I, Pros think, I never pronounced that right. Proselytes. Proselyte. I think it's actually spelled wrong. That's why I was confused. Because it's just supposed to be proselytized. From proselytized? Yeah. And adhe adherents of a Jewish sect. It is possible that some Jewish leaders who were in no way Pharisees or connected with priest. Phariseeism yeah, did not accept these Gentiles as members of the Jewish community. This led to a resentment and arrogance, wherein some Gentile followers of Yeshua questioned whether Jews could really be the ones chosen. Hmm. Paul's answer is affirmative and definitive. God has repudiated his people. Uh, God has repudiated his people? Heaven hmm. forbid. God has not set aside his people and resentment has no place in God's kingdom. The Messiah is a servant of the Jewish people, as are his Roman followers. The Jewish people remain God's beloved, and being in Messiah means that Gentiles in Yeshua are forever attached to Israel. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and I like how, I guess, it lays out because it's so sweet how like, you could say, where God started with a particularity, with human beings, with Abraham, to like you know, the, like electing Abraham so he can become a blessing against all nations, mm -hmm. is not being fulfilled, and you're seeing kind of like the potential divisions or fragmentations that can happen mm -hmm. given this development. So it's just like, um, I mean, I just, I guess, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, say I'm gonna map out the schemas for how people would misunderstand or think through these things and kind of show it from a counter science perspective and stuff because it's just fascinating how like. Despite there would be a continuity with how these things unfold, people would still be like, were they actually the chosen people? Maybe they've been rejected. Maybe we replaced them now. And this is like, no, I mean, that's like saying, I mean, whatever. I was almost, whatever. Yeah. I mean, maybe this is cheating, but yeah. the later verses, yeah. uh, Roman 9, 18 to 23, yeah. um, 
Well, eh. I don't know. Yeah, I forgot okay. what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll get to it, yeah. Yeah. One of these. It's like, um, so yeah, Romans. Uh, I guess Should I'll start. First? Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. I always forget. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, Lord, thank you for bringing us Gentiles to your kingdom, through your people, through your text. So um, I appreciate you, and I hope that you guide us throughout the study and take us somewhere and help us to understand certain things. And also, let all the errors that we make be ours, and let all the glory and insights be yours, and draw people near to you. And open the ears of those who have the ears to hear, and open the eyes of those who have eyes to see, and bring glory to your name. In your name I pray, Jesus, amen. Amen. Alrighty. Alright. I guess I'll start. Sure. From Shaul, a slave of the Messiah Yeshua. That's interesting how he says that. Yeah, this was mm-hmm. a, an emissary, you know, missionary, messenger. Because I was called and set apart for the good news of God. God promised this good news in advance through his prophets in the Tanakh. You know, first five book of Moses, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It concerns his son. He is ascended from David physically. He was powerfully demonstrated to be the Son of God spiritually, set apart by His having been resurrected from the dead. He is Yeshua, the Messiah, our Lord. Through Him we received grace and we were given the work of being an emissary on His behalf, promoting trust granted obedience among all the Gentiles, including you, who have been called by Yeshua, the Messiah. Hmm. Should we so, talk about that first? Yeah, we can, because yeah. like, it compresses a lot. You know, like, and that's, that's what I love yeah. about like, the, Their uh, introduction is always like... Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, here's, here are the main points. like, ah, packed yeah. into one thing. So, okay. Slave to the Messiah, Yeshua. Yep, yep. Because he's the master. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it shows, like, the sovereign relationship yeah. between the master and... The slave um, or the servant. Yeah. yeah. But obviously, like, these kind of language, it yeah. doesn't jive well with... Yeah. Now I'll say it. In fact, yeah. I'll say it that way just so it won't jive. That way yeah. people actually have to think and process what it means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a slave of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuff me, daddy. <laughs> that was funny. I was actually thinking that. I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, Father, cuff me. <laughs> oh, Lord. Father, cuff me before I have sex. <laughs> oh, I remember there was actually a meme where there was just like, she was, she was actually pretty hot, but she was talking to this priest and she was like, you know what? When you say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, they're basically saying, Daddy, I've been a naughty girl. And then the priest's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that is what it is. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. It's just like okay. a, a different stylization, a different appropriation, but yeah. <laughs> um, emissary, like what is that word replacing? I think if I'm... Wait, okay, I have, I have oh, to... Yeah. Kind of like a messenger. So we're... Because it has a feature, the miss, the miss, the missary, you know, like feature. So you can refer, like, it's like a messenger. So okay. Some sort of things. Uh, or apostle, even. Because yeah. emissary is also apostle, you know. Apostle, yeah. yeah. I guess because one of the reasons why I think he translated this way is because he wants to break out of like certain words before you yeah, start hearing yeah. that it doesn't actually hit your brain anymore. Right, so you actually like, have to think now. Like gospel is like, yeah. what does that, what does that mean? mean? Good, good news. news. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why he says good news of God. Which, like, yeah. I, that's what I like about this because it's like when I was reading, I was like, huh. It's kind of, it's like I already knew this, but it kind of like makes it more fresh again. Mm-hmm. So I pay attention to words now. And I think that's what's constantly needed because mm-hmm. I feel like um, the word becomes kind of, yeah. you, know, you hear it and like you don't process it. And there's a way in which you're kind of like almost learning a new language, if yeah. you will, or dialect, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm sorry, because I was called and set apart. Okay, so... Holiness. Set apart, be holy. Holy, yeah. yeah. In a special place mm-hmm. in heaven. Mm-hmm. God promises good news in advance through his prophets. <coughs> so it was prophesied in the Old Testament. Yeah, in the scriptures, yeah. 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 Uh, it's taught by his son, descended from David. Okay. Flesh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He is probably demonstrated to be son of God spiritually, so it's like yeah. connecting body, mind, soul yeah. together. It's like it, it's all important. It's not all about like yeah, yeah, yeah. separating. Yeah. And notice how it says set apart by his having been resurrected from the dead. Like Jesus' resurrection is what lends to him being the son of God. Yeah. Because I remember uh, one of my mentors, his friend, my friend, who's like into it, uh, he's a perennialist. He was like, "Well, the resurrection is another religion. It's not also resurrection in the Old Testament." I was like, "Well, the resurrection in the Old Testament applies to Yahweh, so it's not. You're not getting that." But when you talk about resurrection, other resurrection, I just believe resurrection other religions. Well, rather, I mean, like, um, I guess because there apparently there's like a guy called Sai Baba who was apparently resurrecting people. I'm not sure if that was legit. I didn't research it much, but I was like, hmm. So I don't know. So I was just like, mm, I'm not sure. I don't know. But it's just, it was one of those things I was like pondering, like, "Oh, this is a bit ambiguous." But I know for 
this, it puts his like um, Jesus resurrection is what makes him the son of God because mm -hmm. that's what he set. Like that was the condition of like, okay, if I die and I come back, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it's enough to be like it's it's easy. To, it's different if you're like if you die, I'll bring you back. But like, oh no, I will die and I'll come back and I'll be glorified and you'll be able to connect to me mm -hmm. in a different way. So it's just fascinating. He's the Messiah, our Lord, and it's like I feel like. The word, like almost, like I'm mean, almost kind of changing the, the the word now, so people hear it. And like I say, like master Lao, I say ruler, because mm -hmm. it's the same thing. So people hear it or something. Like uh, I almost want to say president, but it doesn't fully have it. Mm -hmm. But like chief, or our boss, yeah. you know, My daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basically what Jesus yeah, calls his father. He's like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, daddy, yeah. daddy. Yeah. So it's just like um, when I, because I'm trying to find ways. Like, how do you say this to people here? Because I remember I was talking to Jason. I was like, what is a king of kings mean to a, a country that has a president and there's like no more kings. Uh, presidents of presidents. Yeah, right, you can say president of presidents, yeah. Or yeah. chief of chiefs, commander of commanders. Shadow government. <laughs> or more like, he's, more, more like he's the light, you know, the illumination. Yeah. He's the light beyond the... He is the illumination of Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. all-seeing eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Okay, so this next thing is like... Through him, we received grace and mm -hmm. were given the work of being an Apostles, emissary on yeah. his behalf, promoting trust, trust grounded, grounded obedience. Oh, that's an interesting phrase. Trust grounded obedience, you know, like that feature of faith. It's like the, you obey because you have faith. You're grounded. Because, okay. in fact, that's something I was thinking about, like, about the nature of sin. How, like, um, every time you're going to sin, remember, I think I told you in the other video, I was like, you, there's always like a misalignment you make. Mm. You, break, you actually break away from God on the inside before you break away from him in action. Whether. Oh, wait, huh? Yeah, like, come again? You break away from Yahweh from the inside before you break away from him in action. Yeah. Whether it's in terms of like understanding, yeah. in terms of like motivation, yeah. in terms of like trusting him and keeping to what he wants you to do, right. obedience. But there's always like this, you, you separate from him. You ruin the relationship because you're right. basically cheating. Mm -hmm. And then you connect to something else. You, you cheat with sin. Yeah. That's why he Hence say things king. like, yeah, yeah. if you, even if you like have lust in your heart, you've yeah. already committed that. Sin. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. like keep captive your thoughts. Not, not lust, but adultery. Because he's like, yeah. like, you looked at her, and then you did this. Oh so yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. made your, you made your attention so anyway. You actually went right. through, followed through, right, internally to do this. It's yeah. just like one less step away from yeah, adultery. Yeah, exactly. And then it's why he said, captive, ca take captive yeah, all your thoughts. thoughts. Yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it's very interesting because he's like, align your thoughts, align your feelings, align your life, align yourself with me completely. Mm -hmm. That's why he's like, you know, because like conform yourself to me. Don't conform yourself to this or to this. But also he says things that are like pretty impossible for a human to do. Like take captive all your thoughts. Yeah, so, I mean, I, what, it's, you can say, I mean, he puts us like, what, what man is, is impossible. God, all things are possible. Because he's yeah. like, he's empowering you to do this. Yeah. It's a process. He's growing you. Yeah. So, I mean, like it, it, it forces you to kind of humble yourself. Yeah, and pray to him like please exactly Put hence the daily meditation yeah, and yeah, prayer yeah. and stuff because you're like oh it's not me that's doing it, it's you and you're the one who embodies me because how can I capture a thought if I don't have the you could say the potency that you give me to become its master right because by keeping to you you become yeah. master of yourself because I can probably capture like 10 thoughts out of 10,000 in yeah. a day yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like you want you want me to capture all so you yeah. need to give me your Holy Spirit to renew my mind yep, yep. I pray right. because like it it's it's not only some a subconscious thing, your thoughts. It's yeah. just subconscious, and you know you mm -hmm. need to be fully a new being yeah, yeah. for it to become default. Yeah. But this thing, like we receive by grace. Yeah. Well, what? Uh, Through him, we receive by grace. Well, what? What is the grace part? What are we receiving? The works. Uh. The works of the apostles. I I I, I guess if I'm following from the previous, because he said he is Yeshua, the Messiah, our Lord. Mm -hmm. Through him we receive grace. We were given. Okay, yeah. Okay, no, we receive. Grace. We receive grace, not by grace, but what we receive grace? grace. Grace is sort of like a merited favor. It's kind of like you owe me, right? And I just cancel debt, and I'm like, I'll, oh. I'll give you more than you deserve. Okay. Because it's like he didn't have to die. He could have just been like, oh, well, you guys all messed up, so forget y'all. But he just kind of like, because every every moment, every, every act, like that's why people are like, oh, uh, Yahweh in the Old Testament is. Wrath on whatever I'm like, no, he's very gracious. In fact, that's one of the things. He's like, he could at least just destroy all the time. Like, you're not doing what I want you to do. I mean, who keeps who keeps what doesn't work how they want it to work? No one does that. We don't do that. But for some reason he keeps it, then he's like, Okay, will you commit to me? Will you change? Will you do will you repent, if you will? Then I'll change you. Because you willingly want to align with me and now reform you. So there's a feature of grace that's working throughout the whole entire Bible. Adam and Eve, after they sinned, he could have been like, Oh, scratch y'all, new 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 man, new woman. Like, no, grace. Let me 
take care of it all on the stronghold. Kane, you murdered yeah. your brother. Yeah. But, yeah. So there's a pattern of grace throughout the whole entire Bible, and he just kind of like exponentially increases it, like with the whole Sodom game thing. It's like, oh, 50 righteous? I won't destroy. 30? I won't destroy. 20? I won't destroy. 10? I won't destroy. Oh, less than 10? Okay, I'll destroy. But now, one righteous saves all. Mm. Super grace. Yeah. And so, demonstration of his crazy love. Because I was talking to some friends today about, like, the res uh, on, like, uh, about resurrection. About how, like, um, some people would be like, well, why would you make a creation just to sacrifice yourself and hurt yourself, you know? Like, just to show your love. And I'm like, yeah. that's what we do with children. We have children, we sacrifice our time, our health, our energy. And that shows that we actually love them. Right. Just bring them and develop them to become who they are right. and have a relationship with them. And right, them, that was and, the thing I wanted to be embodied and continue forward. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing I wanted to lay out the other day. It's like, well, God, um, being the author of His own rules, yeah, uh, being the, the the ultimate judge mm -hmm. of His rules, yeah. Um, although He is bound by His own rules, if He transgresses it, He has to cancel Himself out. So He never. So He's like, okay. I got a brilliant idea. Right. I'm gonna subvert it right. by um, doing it through my son. Yeah. And like he, he like this, there's whole bureaucracy. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. It's very clear. Then, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, because there's lots of legality language. There's also lots of economic language. Yeah. Even alluding to the Old Testament with stuff they set up for Israel. So he's kind of like he sets you a framework, and he's like, oh, the more you understand this, it'll help you tease out some of these things that are being said in the New Testament. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it 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 was, it gave me the same thing, <coughs> thinking as like why would he do all of this? Right. Like it's so complicated. Like, right. um, but it's the same thing. We have that too. Like with the whole kids things. Like why would you have kids? Right. Like it's so. Like, why would you go through the trouble of like, you know, right. or even just why would you any even anything like exercise? Like why would you wear and tear down your muscles and then get them stronger? And you know, it's just there's lots yeah. of things just kind of like. Yeah, I guess why if you're would thinking, you sacrifice your son to the world? Yeah, because you could say when we think like they were like we're thinking more, I guess, linear, exponential improvement. We don't get like you could say qualitative shifts or qualitative changes that come from doing something that maybe momentarily seem inefficient, but there's still like a, I guess, almost, almost, I guess almost think like a butterfly effect to certain things that you you can't even predict how great this will be. And we we experience that with our lives, but he knows even more so. For what he does right yeah. i mean is he just doing this whole sacrificial like thing with his son i mean yeah to glorify his grace and love yeah but he's also trying to show his love like he wanted it's almost as if like like uh when i said like oh the infinite makes a finite to like reveal to that finite the infinite's nature mm -hmm. so it's almost like um it's kind of like how like we will like human beings they will make a statue to honor themselves as if they're greats and gods he does the, the, opposite. the opposite where it's like he makes something less to show you that like uh to let the less become great uh beside him while also knowing his greatness too it's very it's a very fascinating thing that's why i almost think of it as like a i gave the metaphor of, like it's like imagine a great king or whatever who like goes to, like a random village finds a poor village girl marries them and then develops them to become a great queen mm -hmm. and just like why would you do that but it's just like, I guess it's one of those like I guess actualizing potential and mm -hmm. bringing about a novelty, something new, because there's a feature of novelty to life, like this, this newness, and that's one of the things that actually drives us for lots of stuff, novel experiences, novel ideas. But there's this feature which Alloy was like, um, it's like a, almost like a, I guess a holistic novelty in terms of like what he's unfolding when it comes to us and the creation. Mm. That's one of the categories that can be used to think about it, of course. And then another one you could say like, well, he's also showing a continuity of how he, what he actually is and how he stays the same despite changes or despite, or how like, despite things going wrong, he's always right. You see something like that. So there are, there are multiple categories working with uh, these ideas. Okay. So. We're at seven. If you want okay. to, okay. to all those in Rome whom God loves, who have been called who have been set apart from him grace to you and shalom peace peace be with you yep. from god our father and the lord yeshua the messiah amen first i thank my god through yeshua the messiah for all of you because the report of your trust is spreading throughout the whole world for god whom i serve in my spirit by spreading the good news about his son is my witness 
that I regularly remember you in my prayers. And I always pray that somehow, now or in the future, I might, by God's will, succeed in coming to visit you. For I long to see you so that I might share with you some spiritual gift that can make you stronger. Or to put it another way, so that by my being with you, we might, through the faith we share, encourage one another. Mm. Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Fellowship, yeah. Brothers, I want you to know that although I have been prevented from visiting you until now, I have often planned to do so in order that I might have some fruit among you to set us I have among the, among the other Gentiles. I owe a debt to both civilized Greeks and uncivilized people, to both the educated and the ignorant. Therefore, I am eager to proclaim the good news also to you who live in Rome. Amen. Okay. <coughs> That's fascinating. I do like uh, how Paul's laying certain things out and how like he kind of just weave through different themes mm. that as you're unpacking, you see how like they feed back on each other. Like when he talks about uh, um, what he says um, it's um, for God is my witness. I regularly remember you in my prayers. You know, like and there's a sense like, oh well, if you're connected to God, you can ask Him. Does He actually remember me? And God confirms. So it's just like there's always like um. He sets things up in a way that's like, oh, you can kind of confirm, and that'll reinforce the fellowship, too. So, and then... Wait, sorry, what? Um, I blanked for a bit. Uh, I was saying, like, when he said, um, for God is my witness, I regularly remember you in mm -hmm. my prayers. Mm -hmm. And I always pray that somehow, now or in the future, I might be, I might, by God's will, succeed in coming to visit you. Yeah. So it's like, you could, you know, they could all be like, oh, let's ask God. And God's like, oh, yeah, true. So then it reinforces, like, uh, the fellowship. It's like, oh, okay, you do, you actually do care about us. And, you know, so God to be your witness. We can ask God. And God's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's praying to me. And so it's kind of like it weaves us together. And then as he's going throughout, you know, he's like, because he's, all of this, this whole section is about like, oh, I'm trying to give this to everyone, all of y'all who are in Christ. It doesn't matter what you're civilized Greek, uncivilized Greek, educated, ignorant. But it's not just for them, these Gentiles. It's also for all Gentiles. It's for you Romans now. So I'm talking to you. So he's just kind of like, he's barely rapport, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. one of those things give him a sense of himself you have anything to say or no okay I'll right, read the next <coughs> for I am not ashamed of the good news since it is God's powerful means of bringing salvation to everyone who keeps on trusting to the Jew especially but equally to the Gentile for in it is revealed how God makes people righteous in his sight and from beginning to end it is through trust as the Tanakh puts it but the person who is righteous will live his life by trust Mm -hmm. Where's that from? Habakkuk two four. Yeah, and it, in fact, we reinforce that where it's like, well, if you, you know, if you trust God and trust also faithfulness, if you're faithful to God, you're aligned with Him, and if you're aligned with Him, you won't separate from Him. If you don't separate from Him, you won't do what's against His nature. If you won't do what's against His nature. You don't sin. You know, so it's like it all reinforces each other. Like there's a way in which these ideas, kind of like, mm -hmm. yeah, they're enmeshed as a circuit. You have anything to say? But the person who is righteous will live his life by trust. Okay. No. no. Yeah. Because okay. if I want the ideas for Hebrew, I from, like Bible product explained how righteousness basically means like good relation, right, right relation, right relation with God, right relation with other people. So mm. it's a feature of like um, if you lose, if you're not faithful to other people, if you're not faithful to God, you know, then <clears throat> yeah. Mm. You want to keep continuing? Yeah, I can continue. Yeah. Yeah. What is revealed is God's anger from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who in their wickedness keep suppressing the truth, because what is known about God is plain to them. <coughs> since God has made it plain to them, for ever since the creation of the universe, his invisible qualities, eh, I mean, I guess why, I know, I know why you use the model or universe, but I wouldn't just, I'll just, you know, both his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen because they can be understood from what he has made. Therefore, they have no excuse, because although they knew who God is, they do not glorify him as God or thank him. Notice he's saying God, he's not saying Yahweh. So keep that in mind, which I find interesting, the word choice. On the contrary, they have become futile in their thinking, and their undiscerning hearts have become darkened. Claiming to be wise, they have become fools, 
In fact, they have exchanged the glory of the immortal God for mere images, like a mortal human being, or like birds, animals, or reptiles, you know. I mean, basically what people do with, like, you know. Is he saying that, like, uh, people know... There's a power. There's, there's a like, power. There's, like, something that's working this. Do they? I mean, lots of people... In fact, even, you could say... There's a way in which, um, even atheists, when you push them, they end up sounding like pantheists. Mm. Like, I think Hegel pointed out, like, oh, anti pantheists and atheists are pretty much the same. They all basically say, this is God, which is another from saying, I am God. But but there's, like, uh, they admit kind of, like, um, like Einstein did, that he has, like, this mystical feeling of, like, great mystery, mm -hmm. and, like, this sense of awe in regards to this. And he feels, like, this sense, like, this, wow. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, because, like, like, any atheist, like, in fact, this one is some of the arguments they may use to dismiss Yahweh. They're like, I look at this, it's so amazing. Why does it need a personage? It's like, this is enough. This is so... Wow, like they get this sense, like they have this sense, like this is a great like, power. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, they sense worship. Of yeah, so, and they just don't want to put because they feel like it's an extra. It's like mm -hmm. an extra, like you're adding something that's not necessary. I mean, that was Nietzsche's problem too. Mm -hmm. Remember when we talked about it? How like so? Why is it necessary to add the extra yeah, personality yeah. behind that? Yeah, that's how they feel mm -hmm. about it. But it's kind of like um, because I was talking to this guy who was like um, his problem with Yahweh, like he just feels like what's up with the emotions and all this stuff. Like why is that extra needed? I was like, well, that's like saying why does the earth? Why is the earth not a smooth marble? Why does it need water and atmosphere and you know what i mean or it like, is a smooth marvel if you zoom out far enough okay yes. I'm just kidding <laughs> I, know, I, know what you're doing. I know but well, this is one of those things but in fact if you think about it that is what they're doing they're zooming out too they're not close they're not expecting uh, to god to get the texture to get the like a richness of how he presents it's the same yeah. with people when you don't know somebody that well they look very simple but the more you get to know them, you're like ooh, okay yeah there's these ways you think there's these like, and subtle, you got ridges yeah, there's, yeah exactly there's like these subtle ways like you you put your hand in your pocket yeah. you learn the details because the more important somebody is you learn more ways in which they present and when they deviate from those patterns you'll be like oh there's something going on mm, so it's a lack of intimacy with yahweh but they know mm. the power so, so yeah. get closer yeah but I, yeah. I guess like it's intimidating like because i'm trying to think how i mm -hmm. used to think as yeah. um buddhist or an atheist mm -hmm. slash atheist yeah it's like if you think about how a creator that created all of this yeah like i i can submit that there's a creator because there's too much design i right. think I, I i never was atheist right so i at least <laughs> knew there was a creator right. um but I never could say <coughs> he cared about us. Yeah. Because I'm like, why would he? Yeah. In fact, that's interesting. <laughs> interesting. I have like a friend who was out and he was like, why? why? When in fact, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's like, we don't have that perspective for stuff we make. Yeah. When we make something, it's like, oh, well, I really care about you. But it's just kind of like. But we take it for granted. We don't really think about that. Yeah. Like when we're making poetry, we're not saying like, yeah, but, but I love you. But it, but it's almost like but think of it. It's almost as if it's a way of depreciating the personal. That's what I can put it. We always depreciate the personal and assume the impersonal is like. The max, the max, and you could say that's a feature of the intellect. The intellect feels like it's impersonal, so it will. If you default it, like it will always want to magnify what feels impersonal. And I mean, look at different cultures that are like, oh, feelings, intimacy, um, all that stuff is less than. Or even put it in terms of like the feminine is like not as valuable, but the masculine which feels more impersonal and like right. logical and rigorous. So you're saying like we're magnifying the impersonal, yeah. like mind or masculine aspect yeah. of it but yeah. we're not magnifying the feminine or emotional yeah, yeah, or the spiritual yeah. aspect pretty much and that's why I wrote that dialogue between Adam and Eve mm -hmm. for Adam like how do I know you're a person like me right. and then Eve was like bro you're approaching me with your intellect when it's like feel me observe me make a story like there are all sorts of ways that are made up of you that you but have like the way yeah. the way it is written it's yeah. only the masculine yeah. that's being magnified the feminine is like you have to feel it out it's always like yeah because you have to yeah you have to seek it you have to like yeah. like almost like you're trying to pursue a woman yeah but like yeah. to seek it like to because like it's kind of i mean on the onset people are only gonna seek the intellectual yeah and like oh man the, this is really hard to grapple like yeah but the spiritual is like hiding underneath the emotional is hiding underneath it's not even beckoning to you it's just like it's a, i mean it's a type of i guess sensation too where it's like um if you're like the people who feel awe, like this is so amazing. But and it, maybe they will either because most of a lot of these things also may be cultural, like in terms of depending on what idea you have, whether you inherit those ideas or whether you just make it up. But if you don't have the right idea, hence why you know this is written, so you'll have like the premises, you'll have the text, you'll have the ideas you're supposed to take to approach things with. So if you're in a culture where it's like, um, I feel a sense of mystery and awe, and this is all amazing, and I feel this great power working through this, but but the culture is like, well, eh. Like, it never occurs to you, like, is there, can I call out, can I, like, is, can, is there a response that I'll get? Like, yeah. if you never had that idea, 
you probably won't do it. I mean, yeah, the culture, yeah. the idea that like the intellect is more favorable, yeah. the logic is more favorable than feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been feelings. We've been logic depends on feelings when, when it comes to how we yeah. work, which is kind of funny. But yeah, I think it was perpetuated since the Greeks, right? Uh, in some ways, yes. Like or Plato, maybe, yeah, Plato, like yeah, because Plato, I think he made from a quickly. Um, he had the chariot, or like uh, one was like instinct, the other was like reason, yeah, and stuff like that. But it's like the biblical reality is like um, I don't know, because I guess yeah, I the know. biblical reality it, they never separate it. Yeah, yeah, not exactly. It's always yeah. there. Yeah, it's always like together. And but I mean, the female perspective is still like muted. Yeah, it's because that feminine by nature is always assumed. It's always right, a background. Right. It's like you. It's like you. It's like it's like if, <laughs> if it's like I'm talking about you. I'm assuming you were born. You know, it's like. By talking about you, I'm talking about your mother. Just cancel. You you saying women should be in the background? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's in fact that's more. But when I say background, I think of it as like a, the like a whiteboard that you write, yeah. or like a piece of paper that you write on. But without the paper, you don't. There's nothing yeah. to be seen. There's nothing to be yeah, grasped. Yeah. I mean, without wounds, no one's formed and born. Yeah. So the feminine is a very fascinating. I mean, so I that, understand yeah. the desire for like let's say, uh, Catholicism to embrace. Mary, Mary, yeah, yeah, because that's what seems to be missing the yeah. mother, yeah. Um, and how do you embody the mother in but even Christ without, and Yahweh because without I, Mary? I guess, I mean, in the in Proverbs, wisdom is personified as a woman mm -hmm. and she's calling the people, she's like, Come to me, you fools. But Jesus is wisdom, you see. So there's like a it's really, it's really yeah, androgynous. I mean, if you, you, you tell I mean, you angels know. are androgynous, well, right? I, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't really think about them like that. Yeah, they usually yeah. present as male. As male, yeah. yeah. They're probably female angels. I can't, can't, some people who like see stuff, they're like, oh, I've seen female angels. But generally, they're like, we really see the male ones for whatever reason. Right. So, um, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah, um, so, wisdom is personified as a woman, mm. and Jesus is the wisdom of God, but in flesh, he's male, mm -hmm. human male. Not necessarily, and also human masculine because he's male, you see, but as, I guess, divine, you could say he's divine feminine, if you will, but uh, it's really, really weird, but these ideas are so weird, yeah. but, yeah, I mean, it's fascinating, because I remember when I was a kid, I asked my mom, I was like, oh, if uh, God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, is the Holy Spirit, the Mother, like, I remember I asked my mom that. <laughs> That's a very logical yeah, question. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's an astral algorithm that you unfold, because you're used to, like, oh, I have mom and dad and me, yeah, so, yeah. so I was asking, and that was fascinating, and Cause this is one of those features. Cause I have a friend. Uh, she's like, um, she feels like the Bible is too masculinized and focuses mainly on men and uses men only to work. And then, but then you read the New Testament. It's just like so Jesus interacts with so many women. Like, right. Like, there were more women. It Jesus. was the women that yeah, this, found this him in the tomb. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and in some ways, you could say it's, it's like he's kind of concretizing. I guess you could say the feminine in, mm -hmm. in some ways. But it's like the feminine discovers the secrets and reveals it. Then the masculine takes it and then they become missions and they spread it to other people. Because like the you can say the masculine is always more explicit, but yeah. the feminine is like the actual gets the mystery, gets the background, and then brings it forward. And it's, it's just fascinating. It's just it's kind of like because you almost I guess you, I can almost think of it as like a you think of like a, a culture that has to go to war. Women will give birth to men, and men become soldiers and go to war. But without the women giving birth, you won't have any men who be able to go to war. So there's always like that. There's always like you always need the feminine. Mm -hmm. Because when I say women, I'm obviously presupposing like the feminine feature of like. Generation creativity and spawning mm. womb. So formation. where is the feminine aspect of like the Trinity? I mean, I mean, other than wisdom, I guess, which is Jesus. I mean, I have this weird idea that in some ways the masculine relation to us, as far as like how human beings, how God affords Himself. I mean, we him. are the women. The yeah, bride. yeah, yeah. We're the bride. We're Eve. You know. But like I'm saying that. Yeah, I guess God's relation to us is to like create that situation of us, us male and female creatures with the masculine, feminine, and masculine as us, relating to him as the feminine. While the feminine, that's him, is kind of like you could say, I'm like it's, it's hidden. No, it's like it's it's like a oh, it's, it's, it's a weird idea that I had. I was like, because uh, I was thinking, why is the Godhead presenting as father? Because think about it, if if he had never made the creation, there'd be no father. You mm -hmm. See, there'd be no metaphor. Like, what what is a father? Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, those, what, by virtue of having human beings and making himself intelligible and affording himself to us to understand and relate to him, he presented himself as father and then son. Like, presented himself as masculine. It's like, what's, why is it his action, his immediate interface, access to us, masculine? And it's like, hmm, well, what does masculinity allow? 
it's like a bit more direct. It's a bit more commanding. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's these different features that like um. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, by virtue of God commanding us, He has to show as a masculine presence. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's one of the things I was. But like, when you yeah. tease him out, like, I don't know, like a, like a proverb or. Oh, wisdom. I, I don't know honestly because these things are get weird. Because this, yeah. this at some point I don't ponder because because sometimes it almost becomes like why wasn't I born a girl? Because like it's <laughs> like the, I think it would be because like it makes sense why <laughs> why then like people look to Mary and like oh yeah that's yeah, yeah the, that's the female yeah, that, that's essence the female, that we've been missing yeah 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 it's like, of course yeah it's natural but is it but on, on, on the part I'm gonna want to see is like um maybe. He's doing what's counterintuitive to what we'd expect. Because I guess if I well let me put it this way. If I remember correctly, in Hebrew, earth is that's feminine. So Adam coming from Earth is like, oh, feminine, maternal, and father. So it's like you see like human beings are spawning out of like, okay. uh, the feminine material right. Right. and the uh, masculine animation. Damn, your objective. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, I can see how people think it like that. So it's, it's just fascinating, where it's like um Cause these are, these ideas get weird at some point, but it's like, right. I guess at some point it's like, well, these these are premises you either take them or you don't take yeah. them. And I guess there's a way in which, in some ways, God wants to make himself, I guess, offensive to your immediate intuitions. Cause he's like, like when anyone talks about humans, he's like, I don't look at the person's form, I look at the heart. So in this case, it's like when it comes to him presenting as masculine, it's like, why are you looking at you could say the form, if you will, of the masculine? Look at the heart. What's going on that works this masculine? display this masculine structure this masculine way of like uh, presenting himself as like he's the father and then the logos the wisdom that was personified as feminine in proverbs is now taking on the masculine male of becoming king through david you see what i mean so it's just like it's like there's a way in which it's like i guess it feels like you're not following you're not learning from him and trying to understand him as he is you're kind of like trying to be like why aren't you fitting the symmet uh, like the symmetry that i want to make you're okay. not fitting the order of like so how I experience human beings. What is it you think that we need to learn from, I guess, this pattern? Hmm. As far as like presenting as medicine or what? Yeah. Hmm. Because, you know, we talked about us being Eve. Yeah, we're the feminine. Thing. And yeah. like Mary, who out of her came Jesus. Yes. So through us, we will give birth to the new... Church and slash new heaven. Yeah, if you will. Yeah, that's such a good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it works. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Or like, cause I haven't, I guess, studied the language enough, but there's a way in which, like, if I couldn't study the language and all I had this, was this, these are things I'd be thinking while using other verses to think through things. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the end of the day, we can pray and just be like, hey, could you explain this to me? Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> that's what I'm, these, these are just like yeah. extraneous. Yeah, exactly. It's just fun to think about. Yeah, of course, it is. I get that. I but get the it. main thing but, is. But people do, faith. Get, people do get stuck on this. They yeah. do. Like, in fact, like one of my friends was like, no, why is God. I feel like God shouldn't be neuter. Like, he should. He, like, or he, she, she didn't say he, but he's like, God ought to be neuter. No, he, no, she. Just like, uh. I'm like, I get that. I get why, but it's like. But if somebody could actually argue like, well, why won't God present as feminine? We know creation comes through women. We know women give birth. So wouldn't it make sense for God to be feminine? That's why I'm like, no. Why won't God be masculine? Because we know men give sperm to women. So it's, it's, there's a way in which you can like pull the metaphors and the different associations out of right. everywhere and want it to be some way, right. depending on who you are. So there's a way, at the end of the day, I'm just like, let it be what it is. If it presents as this, take it or leave it. <clears throat> that's only if, yeah. Because like that's only if you accept Christian premises. Yes. And you have to buy into that. Yeah. You have to accept it as whole. Yeah. And I understand when someone comes from the outside, yeah. they want to grant, yeah. you know, like borrowing from different cultures because yeah. that's what they think is like totality. Yeah, is. yeah. Yeah. It's like you want to borrow from everything. Yeah. So how do you, <clears throat> how do you say it's necessary to like just take the Christian premise for what it is. Because, like... I mean, think of what a premise is. You can't make a conclusion without a premise. Yeah. If you're thinking in terms of logic. Right. Nor, and also, even if, if you pun on the word premise, it's like a place. Right. Where, what are you in? Are you in this, or are you not? Right. So, so for, for those people, they're going to be like, so then why don't I just choose a Buddhist premise and live by that? 
I mean, go ahead, but if it's not true, then, yeah. you know, that's, that's why it becomes matter, like, is it true? How do you figure out what's true? Which was, which was what we were mainly exploring in the last video with, like, we don't, it wasn't explicit, it wasn't, like, direct, but it was, like, right. that's basically what the main talk was, faith and doubt, was, like, what, yeah. how do you be faithful to what's faithful? How do you figure out what's faithful? Do you doubt certain things? Because cause when you doubt, it's because you don't think it's faithful, you don't think it's true. Mm -hmm. When you have faith, it's because you think it's true. That's just how it works. So, if somebody's like, oh, if I can choose, if I can pick and choose, they're basically saying, well, none of them are actually technically faithful. It's like there's something else that allows them to choose that, that allows those things to be faithful to them in some way, but they don't actually know what it is. And fundamentally, people do that. They're like, oh, this is actually, there's actually a, a bigger mystery, like an actual real mystery we can never access that lets all this happen, but we can't access it. So it's a free for all. Mm -hmm. And that argument is harder to deal with because it's like it leaves it open and people right. love that. It's very easy. Oh, people okay, love that. Okay, it's I like, see oh, that. Oh, you see? There's a more insidious, like, because yeah. we can't figure it out. Exactly. It and he, and grants, it, and it, it grants like us a, to do, we can choose what we want. We can do what, what we it's want. It's X do. factor to be like, yeah, what I'm doing right now is okay. Yeah, I don't have to repent. I don't have to conform. I don't have to submit. Right. No one's my lord. No one's my master. I am. That's why those things are so interesting. Like, there's and notice how there's so many different arguments and perspectives. Like, in, in every single situation, like there's biblical criticism. Else, in every way, this work, everything it presents, gets torn apart in some way. Right. There's ways so like you could think outside of it, or like just try right. to attack it or whatever, or try to negate it or ignore it. But it's just like if you're trying to discern and work, it's like things. But start if you really different. like really take the premise for yeah. what it is, yeah. like it like things start locking into place. Exactly. Exactly. So. And, but lots of people don't get that because you have to start. It's sort of the first verse. That's the first verse. I'm sure you start with that. Okay. In the beginning, God, God yeah. made everything. Okay, then after that, it's like, it says Yahweh. Okay, God is Yahweh. Okay, who's Yahweh and stuff like that? Okay, how do I engage it? Okay, Yahweh became Jesus. Okay, uh, okay, now, so it's like, you get that, and it's like, I'm locked in. It's like, okay, fold for me. Give me a sense of reality. Help me to think how I'm supposed to think. Help me experience and know, and help me, you know, your sense of self and reality comes together with, with, with a mystery where it's like, it's like, it's like something's happening that you can't, I guess I'm gonna put it this way. Like I have, <clears throat> I have a, like I told my friend who believes in self-organization, but self-organization is you could say uh, from the perspective of you looking at things from a second-person point of view. Because from my perspective, you're moving your body on your own, so that's you self-activating. All right. But you don't actually know what's making a person do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So there's a feature in which, when you're with Yahweh, there's a unfolding of a relationship. Not just a self-organization, but a relational organization where you're being organized and conformed to him. And by being conformed to him, you're revealing more about him. But people can't see the other person you relate to. It's, almost, it's so interesting. It's like an interesting uh, situation. There's always yeah. uh, hidden information. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like people don't have access. They only get what you there present. You no, no, no. And, and in some ways... It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all good. And in some ways... That's if you think about it. That's actually the feminine. Yeah. Like uh, the Yahweh being invisible. That's the feminine feature, where it's like, oh, but the feminine is making you right, more explicit as masculine. Yeah, yeah, the mystery. But you're becoming more explicit as a masculine and revealing the image of the feminine. That's the, uh, yeah. It's very interesting. So you're saying I'm a woman? <laughs> um, yeah, Matt Walsh. You're a yeah. woman, Matt Walsh. What is woman? <laughs> what is? Woman? How is a woman? <laughs> Why is a woman? <laughs> when is a woman? Where is a woman? Yeah. Who was a woman? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Those questions are so interesting, but yeah. Because it's like, to ask about a what in regards to any noun, it's almost to ask about all of this, if you think about it. If you really want to answer what a what is, there's a way in which you have to end up confronting what's your story about this that allows the what. Because if not, all you can go with it, like, this is how this what affords itself for me to interpret it and interact with it. That's, because that's the most you have with any given. Mm. Alright, you want to go on to the next one or do you want to keep exploring this? Do you see anything that you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, this whole thing, like, <clears throat> nails a lot of stuff, which is interesting. Which, like, um, which I think sometimes there's a way in which these verses get used in a way that doesn't... That kind of like makes people kind of um, uh, gaslight people. Uh, gaslight atheists. Gaslight atheists. Like, what like, do you mean? Like, when they says like, um, what is revealed is God's anger from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who in their wickedness keep suppressing the truth. Because what is known about God is plain to them since God has made it plain to them. Right. It's, it's very so, abrasive. Yeah. But it, yeah, but it makes yeah. it like, oh, you, you know there's a power. You know right. like this is. What do you mean I know? Yeah. It's like, yeah because people are like, <laughs> you saying I'm dumb? <laughs> no, they're not even saying that. They're just saying like, in fact, somebody's just saying I am dumb because I don't know this. Like, why are you telling me I know stuff? I don't, like, I'm not even yeah. sure. Those are, I'm an agnostic. Yeah. yeah, what yeah. Do you, I'm, I don't know. What, what do you mean by, in fact, I don't even know what God means. I don't know mm -hmm. what the word means. What, what would it mean for me to know 
God exists. I don't know what even the word means. What, I don't know what I'm supposed to track or observe. What's right. plain to me? What am I sp supposed to see? And then how do I know I'm working properly to see it? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, these are questions that people don't usually tease out, but these are things that I think about because like I had the whole Google Docs, I was explaining how like, what does this mean? And because there's a way in which you could feel gaslighted. Mm -hmm. like, you know, like, and some Christians misuse these verses, I feel like. They, I feel like they don't fully, because they don't understand. Because think about, if, if, especially these Christians who like, have you ever been an atheist? If you were an atheist, did you actually know this? You didn't really feel like you knew. There's a way in which you kind of like, you were experiencing things, but you were kind of like putting them into a different constellation in your head as far as like how to understand it. Like the stars are still there, but they just have it rearranged differently now. So it's just fascinating. And yeah. And then it's like, um, <clears throat> like when it says like, um, have been clearly seen because they have been understood from what ha he has made. Mm. So this is like you can derive the potency, the eternal power, and the divine nature. Okay, so why is it necessary to glorify God? I think that okay, that's a okay. second point. <clears throat> I think like remember I gave an example of like um like why why is it necessary for God to create all this mm -hmm. out of love mm -hmm. and wanted to go back to Him through praise and glory and worship? I I guess it starts with when David was like uh, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Like this, by nature of being, it already reveals to how immense he is. I mean, I mean, David was like, look at this. I'm even you don't even have to be a uh, theist. This mm -hmm. you align with David. If you look at this night sky when it's starry, or like you ever get a sense of something like, this is insane. This is amazing, glorious. But now David's like, this was made. So because it's glorious, who does it belong to? The person who made it. The gloriousness belongs to the person who made it. It's that simple. There's a simple logic to it. Okay. Are you following? So because it's majestic. Yeah. Who does this majesty belong to? Yes. Who 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 could do this majesty thing, majestic thing, if not somebody who's even more majestic? That's basically the logic. You see what I mean? It's like like all the stuff I'm telling but you. But like, yeah. what? Okay, so why is it necessary? Like, you can follow that logically and be yeah. like, okay, so there's something more majestic. Yeah. Pretty majestic, God, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that praise? Is that? No, that is praise. Cause think, I mean, think of it this way. That's like acknowledgement, recognition. Yeah, that's, that's what that's what glorifying is. We we glorify celebrities. We glorify is that it? athletes. Yes, that is. Is that what glory is? Yeah, worship. Like glory is. Ha I mean, glory when they make it. Because metaphor. like when in, I... the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, the metaphor probably is like weight. This sounds like it's heavy. It's like ooh, this is mm. like if like the president showed up, like I'm saying, I'm coming to your house. You'd be like whoa, whoa, whoa. You see what I mean? It's like this sounds like this is important. Like I gotta make my house look nice, and you see what I mean? Yeah. But the creator of all, they're not. Making you right. feel that way, but right. but shows you how like how dead inside we are. Like we're just so numb to like these things. That's just mm -hmm. legit, and that's that's God's point. He's like, look, y'all don't get it. Y'all are so, yeah. Mm. And the fact that we have to untangle this while talking to sh for people to even get like the this fact there's a simple logic to it. Because it's a fallen world. Yeah, yeah. with fallen people, and who are and also we're kind of stupid creatures, honestly. So, <laughs> just, yeah, just being honest. <laughs> I see. I mean, we misunderstand each other. Oh, okay, so we must have said ourselves. We'll when I yeah, yeah. think of the image of worship or praise, yeah. uh, you think about. If, if, if I can't remember correctly, I'm not sure if this is true, but I remember you know the how soccer play and soccer people scream ole ole ole. Apparently, it came from. I remember, um, was it a bullfight or something? Like once somebody was doing ole. something cool, yeah, they'll say Allah Allah Allah, but it's supposed to ole ole ole. So they were praising God for when something cool happened. They said Allah. Yeah, but I think it was. But that's Muslim. You're not getting the illusion. Because Allah is supposed to be great for Muslims. They're praising. So they're like, Allah, what the hell is so amazing? Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Olay, olay, olay. Well, so the, the word changed to, from Allah to Olay. No, no, I, I'm, I know. Yeah. But like, were people that were bullfighters mostly Islamic in nature? I don't know. I don't remember the history. Of <laughs> okay, okay. But I know the, the, Boer, the yeah. Moors took over Spain. If yeah. I remember correctly. The okay, Moors were then. like Arabs. Like they were Muslim and North Africans. So... So it's like, mm. a, I'm not sure if that story is true, but I always found that interesting. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. That tracks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be true to have an essence yeah, in it. Yeah, that. exactly. It gets it gets across the point. So, like, uh, yeah. Because uh, uh, C.S. Lewis points out in The Weight of Glory that praise and worship yeah. is the culmination. Hey, how are you? How are you? Oh. Good. Like, praise and worship is the culmination of... Uh, it's the completeness, or it's the, it's the apex yeah. of... Thanksgiving or glory. It's like if you don't praise, you cut it short of something. Yeah. It's like 
So like we praise all the time, you know, we praise like, oh my wife, you're so beautiful. Right, right, right. You know. Like you, you wanna pause it? We're making a video by the way. Yeah. We're have, we're making a video on uh, Bible study. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're you can be heard. Okay, cool. But you can be heard right now, just so you know. It's okay. Unless unless you want to come on, like okay. It's okay. Alright. Oh, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> I don't right, know. Cool. Right. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> and notice what's interesting this passage here, in fact, they have exchanged the glory of the immortal God for mere images. Mm -hmm. What's interesting? You know what I'm saying? We're saying okay, like it's right. like you're, 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 soccer teams. Yeah. Well, well, not not just that, but it's more like uh, like people who like because these things that he's listing are kind of like false gods, like things that people worship and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like people worship the creation, like any feature creation. Like oh, we'll honor this. We'll put our focus on it. We'll treat it as if it's like the supreme, the most important. Like people who just mainly live for like their sports team, you know, or yeah. like who just mainly live for like video games or whatever. Just like or like this particular influencer. Mm -hmm. These are all. Or a musician, you know, just these are all. I mean, American Idol, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know yeah, 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 yeah. or Japan Idol Idols. stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is what human beings do. Yeah. They just kind of just mutated into different forms, you know, depending on the culture. But nowadays, mm -hmm. and with IT coming, uh, with the virtual reality coming, it's gonna become in that you know, we're gonna make idols of abstractions of software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always getting caught in the image and losing the actual. All right, let's move on. All right. <coughs> and this is, this. I think this is a part, this whole section, because I, I was watching this video talk about God's wrath being when, not just when he destroys it, but prior to that, he lets you just get it wrong. He lets you go astray. Like what Pharaoh's heart, the Pharaoh's heart. He's like, oh, you're going this way? I'll let you go. Oh, you're, you're getting tricked and you don't, you're not thinking things through, you're not trying to figure out what's true, what's good. I'll let you get deluded. I'll let you get it wrong. I'll let you go. But in the process of getting it really wrong, mm -hmm. it, it polarizes what is good. Yeah. So it's like, it makes it extremely obvious that like... But, sometimes people, but sometimes people don't, they, they, look, they become too far gone. Yeah. So... Nice. Yeah. This is why God has given them up to the vileness of their heart's lust, to the shameful misuse of each other's bodies. Is this talking about sex? Yeah. Okay. Or even just this, it's not just sex, it's anything. Are there I mean, technically, things? technically, everything you do with your body that's sin is a misuse of your body. But the sexual one is just even more because that's where life in, comes through. That's where human beings. Is human beings is it are. really prevalent in this time in Rome right now? I mean, he's talking. This is kind of like an overarching thing of just human cultures in general. That's oh. how human beings are. That's why it says wrath of God is heaven against all godlessness and wickedness. It doesn't say Romans. All godlessness and wickedness of people, when the wickedness keeps suppressing the truth. You see, like he's laying out, like this is how human beings are. Like any behind anything that's anti-God, that's wicked and misaligned with him, is this feature that he's talking about. And this is these are the things that unfold from it. And then you can say people will be born into a culture of godlessness, and they will inherit certain practices, certain mindsets, certain values, certain frames of thinking, and so on. And they will not get it. So there's a way in which somebody, maybe somebody will initially get it wrong, but then you'll inherit their wrong. If you know what I mean, so then it's kind of, so it's a lot more complex than it's laying it out. But you know, obviously, it doesn't have time to lay out all the technicalities. Mm -hmm. But just think of like if your father was like an idol worshiper, like oh, we worship trees or something, and they're like you would get raised like oh, we always worship trees, so I worship trees too. But you weren't, you didn't make yourself blind. You just took that idea from your dad, and now you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's why the gospel gets preached. That's why people get taught mm -hmm. and given these things. So it's, it's important to be reminded. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and people get prayed for, so that will eliminate them. Yeah. They have exchanged the truth of God for falsehood. By worshiping and serving created things rather than the Creator, praise be He forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this is one. Yeah. Wait. It reminds me of like when Muslims like peace be upon you with Muhammad, and they okay. say Muhammad's name. <laughs> yeah. Except this is more legit because yeah. This is why God has given them up for degrading passions. Yep. So that their women exchange natural sexual relations for unnatural. In fact, I want to look at the word natural in that passage because it has a feature of like, I almost want to put it as like you could say, um, perhaps, I would not be surprised if it was saying purposeful. 
Well, why wouldn't trace like that? But I guess I'm curious, like, as to like what's meant by this or what's encapsulated in the word here, because yeah. when people hear natural, they think of like, oh, nature, blah blah blah. Like, well, homosexuality is like other animals are no, no, so that's all natural. It's like, well, and we can look it up later. Yeah, yeah. Because there's because there's a specification that they're trying to clarify when they use it. Because even when people talk about, oh, you're not acting natural, mm -hmm. we know what it means. Yet people like kind of do this weird equivocation. Mm -hmm. Like, well, everything is technically natural. It's like um, we have a sense of what's baseline and regular. No. Anyway, continue. Uh, and likewise, the men giving up natural relations with the opposite sex, burn with passion for one another, men committing shameful acts with other men and receiving in their own persons the penalty appropriate to their perversion. These passions are going to piss off lots of people who are listening. <laughs> well, why is it directed to the Romans? Is it... No, because I guess... Or I mean, I pre that's a good question, actually. Hmm. I guess because Rome was the biggest empire, so yeah. it's just kind of like, oh, if I give it I mean, to like, the most people, I it'll hear, pass it to a lot more people. I so hear like, that yeah. in Roman time, it's yeah. like, it, sex is pretty yeah, yeah, there's lots liberal. Of stuff. Yeah, you yeah. can go to like a bathhouse and, and just yeah, and stuff like order that. sex yeah, yeah, like, yeah, on the menu. Yeah, yeah, so I would like to have a threesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the combo. <laughs> yeah. mm, okay. In other words, since they have not considered God worth knowing god has given them up to worthless ways of thinking oh that part is so interesting no no just keep that premise in mind yeah. it's, it's a way it's like another way of saying hardening their hearts yes or but no, strengthening but, but no, their hearts notice, it's, it's notice how it put it. it says since they have not considered god worth knowing which almost sounds like a contradiction like because he says god is revealed like like all this stuff is clear yeah. but then it puts it like no it's, they it, there's a way, choose there's, a, there's a different types of knowing because like you say they're not trying to I could say, um, I guess you could say, um, I may walk into your house and be like, oh, somebody lives here, but I'm gonna be like, I don't want to get to know the person or even try to figure out who the person is or if they'll come back or if I can message them or whatever. So as a result, I guess one of the ways I can frame it in terms of like how it's putting it, because it's, it's almost I almost think of it like a, there are different types. There's like levels of knowing, if you will. But if the highest level is what creates intimacy, if mm -hmm. you don't consider that, where you're like. Well, like, there are people who are just like, well, whether there is or isn't a God, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Haru Kamaru Kami said that. He's like, oh, if you believe in God, he exists. If you don't, he doesn't. What did I care? That's basically what he said. So, his mindset, in fact, like, that's very much like, like, nah. His mindset is... If you're not worth knowing. If you are, like, even if there's a possibility that you're worth knowing, you're not worth knowing. Because people who do believe, believe, those who don't, don't. But I'm not going to try to figure out if you are. You're not worth even attempting. You see? That's, is that a bad mindset? Because it's like... It stops you from you're, you're not true seeking. That's because you're not true seeking. You're not seeking what's best. You're not right. seeking what's true. And you can say there's a way in which, by virtue of coming into this mystery, there's a, there's a way in which it acts. It almost demands like you ask of it something. It does, I almost that's, I guess that's right. how I've always felt since I was a kid. I've always been like right, I'm right. here. I'm like hmm. Yeah, what's this is interesting. What's going on? Yeah, what's the point? Yeah. What's going on? Like it's like if you're not exploring. I those think questions. that's a natural question. Literally everyone asks at certain points. Exactly. And right. the futility of it. Yeah. Like what everyone's like, just giving up, you know, go nine to five. Yeah, yeah. Like you just go with the herd at that point. Yeah. Um, but on one hand, I guess a part of me feels like it's a bit, well, like before I've thought it through, but it feels a bit unfair. Where it's just like, okay, because like Paul and Acts says, okay, God, let the nations do whatever. Mm -hmm. They had their cultures. They didn't know certain things. They knew other things and so on. And let them unfold. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, God's not going to punish people for ignorance necessarily, mm -hmm. but for their intentions, for their, you know, the law written on their hearts. Yeah. So there's a way in which, like, um, because I guess I'm trying to figure out who's, what context, who's, who, I guess there's, a, there's like, there are multiple, I guess I'm reading, I'm just like, there are different applications for this that teases out. Because it's like, it who's it's for. saying, like, it's the, in spite, yeah. like, if you choose to ignore God yeah, in yeah. spite there's pointers yeah. to him. Yeah. The more obvious the pointer is. Yes, yes. Um, like Pharaoh, when Moses told Pharaoh. Like, the, the more hardening your heart gets. Yeah. Not by God's doing, but by your own doing. I mean, it says, well, I guess in a sense he's not exactly, it's more like what he's letting happen. Yeah, wait, in other words, since Which they have technically is him doing it. If you're thinking God has it. given them up to worthless way of Yeah, he's like, I'll like give giving you them yeah, up. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Let's go think think about this way. Yeah. About this way, yeah. So yeah, I mean like the the yeah. word for hardening it, I I think it translates to strengthening or something. Yeah. So Pharaoh strengthened his heart. He yeah. allowed him to think worthless things. Yeah, yeah. Like to allow him to think, I can beat a guy, uh, you know, like I can beat a god who's like literally his snake devoured my two snakes, 
he's changing the river, his water yeah. into blood. Like you That's know, like, like signs. Yeah, like all like these signs. Like it's like, bro. Why, the more why? intense it got. Yeah, yeah the like, more it's like, no, no, no. Till like his son was killed. It's like, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I'm backing up. Then, even then, he still went after that. Like, like, <laughs> we, we can win this. We got this. We got this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, bro, we're following a guy who's like, yeah. uh, there's like a, a pillar of fire yeah. at night, yeah. right in front of us. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, even the Israelites, anyways. Yeah, that's. I mean, I guess that's what also makes it feel more realistic to me in some ways because that is how human beings are. That's stupid. I mean, look at the, how many movies we make where we're like, we feel like we can fight gods or whatever, but Yahweh is on a completely different level. But for some reason, like we have lots of movies where we feel like, oh, if we just band together as humanity and kumbaya, we'll fight to survive. And it's like in real life, in reality, we'd be dead. If like <laughs> if Thanos was here, you know, you know what I mean? Like this, that's not working yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, if Thanos was here. You're like, put on your toy, Tony Stark. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, okay, I so. So that they do improper things, okay. Yeah. They are filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, mm -hmm. greed, and vice, mm -hmm. stuffed with jealousy, murder, quarreling, dishonesty, and ill will. Mm -hmm. They are gossips, mm -hmm. slanders, haters of God. Mm -hmm. They are insolent, arrogant, and boastful. Mm -hmm. They plan evil schemes. They disobey their parents. They are brainless, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. Mm -hmm. They know well enough God's righteous decree that people... Who do such things deserves to die. Mm -hmm. Yet not only do they keep doing them, but they <laughs> applaud others who do the same. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. It's everyone who, yeah. like, knows. Like you know, you've been given it. You've been told this, and yet you're just like, nah. Right. And so then I was like, okay, the, this ahead. is talking about people who've heard the gospel. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it's because I think because I think that's what people because sometimes I feel like Christians use these verses out of context and make it seem like oh the random agnostic guy who's like trying to figure out I don't know what or rather agnostic ever heard of agnostic not agnostic agnostic means like I don't even know what the idea of God is I don't know which idea it's not what I'm not even sure there is I'm not even sure what the idea is yeah but so okay so yeah. the, to those people yeah. like you said like there's pointers to a creator yeah like you can boil it down to like. Or even at least some sort of power, some sort yeah, of mystery, yeah. some sort of heaviness, glory, yeah. if you actually are paying attention. So you're like, you work your way up, yeah, you yeah. contend with each level yeah. until you get to like a creator God who wants you to do certain things. Yep. And then if you look at that, yeah. and if you, some part of you kind of accept that and yeah. you still go against it, exactly. then like, exactly. you deserve to die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Even if like, if, because there's a, the future of the creation is also you. Like the people who like, I think, um, I think it was Manu Kant who said, there are, there are two things that fill me with awe. The heavens above me and the moral law within me. Mm. Which is what I mean. So it's, it's like, like it's not, equivalent. It's, yeah, he, like he said, they fill them with all. They feel like this makes like how do I have this sense like like just not murdering people is mm. not, not murder is not right. Don't, don't, just don't go around just stabbing old ladies and babies. You know, mm. like just just don't do that. Don't kill puppies. You know, like just just like what makes me have a sense that's not okay. And why do I have a sense that those who are not functioning right, who are a rarity, who are that way, there's something wrong with them? What mm. what tells me that? What's what's going on? Why am I programmed this way? Why am I? Coded this way, if you. Will. What's, mm -hmm. Why do I have a law in me? That Isn't there a there? psychopath that like yeah. converted? Yeah, yeah, the guy who uh, I think I shared. Did you share this testimony? I think you shared this testimony. Oh, it was my friend Trey. Yeah, no, I shared it with y'all. No, no. no, I shared it with sure. you. I sh uh, maybe it was one of us shared it with other in text, not through the group. Like, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Well, yeah, he's a psychopath, but even he was like, "Look, my heart's not right. I'm not working properly." But some other reason, Jesus changed me. And how did he? tease that out because at first he didn't care no because he said he was an atheist and he was like bro i don't care like i feel like he was like i basically feel like i'm a god and i can do whatever the hell i want and and then he said he hit his dad on the head with a yeah, hammer yeah, yeah. and then he went to jail and then when i was reading the bible he was just like things just kept on sticking out to him like hitting him he's like what's going on like mm. so i mean that's fascinating i mean it reminds me of like the whole the blind the guy who's blind who like uh jesus opened his healed him so he could spread things out so it's kind of like like when God, like that verse, was like, who made man's mouth? Who made the deaf, the mute, the seeing, or the blind? So like, why, it's like, why would God make psychopaths? Why would God make all these types of people? Because it's, it's just right. like, I can work them all and conform them to me. Mm -hmm. And making something new out of it. Yeah. More revelation of his glory. Mm -hmm. You wanted to look up natural? Yeah, yeah. You can look so it up. So that was verse 26? Yeah, in blue letter. Romans 1, verse 26. For this... Cause God gave them up unto vile afflictions, for even their women did change the natural use. Okay. 
That's pretty cool. Is that the what, what app is that? Blue Letter Bible. Oh, wow, I gotta get that app. I didn't really get on that. Physicals. Inborn, agreeable to nature, governed by the instincts of nature. Okay, so because I guess people people almost have a sense like um every variation goes, mm -hmm. except when you I guess when you comes to um socialization or civilization that's mm -hmm. when things become just artificial if you will mm -hmm. where we try to constrain certain instincts and ways of working but i guess i'm just trying to figure out how to think about it. it's like i guess fool's gold and real gold like the real gold is like um you could say if you want to argue biblically it's like male and female being attracted to each other and reproducing the fool's gold is you can get all sorts of variations on this where people can be attracted to. I mean, there are people who commit right. bestiality. You right. know what I mean? Or even people who are in love with their own picture. Like, it seems like, oh, I'm attracted to myself. I like looking at myself. See, so like, you can get like malfunctions, deviations. Right. But then there's a way in which some of these deviations seem more extreme than others. So the ones that feel more, you could say, compact or intimate or manageable or whatever. And then you can also, they also feel a bit more, I guess, familiar. There's a way in which you can feel like you can grant them more of the legitimacy, if you, get, if you get what I'm saying. And because that's, that's basically what um, some people, I guess, the underlying argument with, um, I guess, um, I don't want people to call it like, the gay agenda. I mean, everyone has an agenda. This, the Bible has an agenda. This is mm, yeah. agenda. So it's just like, I, I, I hate what people are facing. So I'm like, everyone has an agenda. Just let, just let the argument come out. What's the argument? And what are the values? So it'll be like, because um, I guess, I remember I told you how, like, well, who's in the street? But like, I, used, I have lots of gay friends and stuff, and I wrote, I write these things, or one of them, I let him read it, and I was, he was basically, I was exploring how he'd feel mm -hmm. given these different things and things he's learned, and he read it, and he started crying, and he felt like I understood him and stuff. So I was just like, because I was thinking, because I wrote from the first, like, wait, what if I love this woman? And it's like, for some weird reason, I'm not allowed to be with women. But we're supposed to, like, or I guess we're supposed to, like, like, put our reproductive stuff into, like, something, and it develops a baby, and we're not supposed to have sexual contact with each other or whatever. And we're not supposed to be romantically coupled with each other in that way because it's supposed to be oriented for this. But I was trying to think of like the decent, like you could create all sorts of alternate ways as a story could play out. And I was like, huh, how would I feel? I was like, well, I'm in love with this person. Like romantically, like, I'm in love with this, so I want to be with them. And I want, I'm attracted to them and I feel desire for them. But yet somehow, for some reason, how I'm working is not how I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So there's this weird. Yeah, so how do you so this, cause, tackle that? Like... Yeah, exactly. That's what one of my friends is struggling with right now. Or because she's because she's bi and right. she's like um but, God, but, I've, but I've heard lots of people's testimonies were like uh, right. no you just transform it happened but like yeah. there's a reason why God makes people certain ways yes like there's, yeah you know like because that's why I already I, that verse I just gave you from the death the mute the seeing yeah, the yeah. blind or the guy who's a psychopath like I told you about yeah for his glory right? yeah but, yeah like conforming like, you to them yeah but it feels like every area of your life can be. Any area of feature, feature of being human can be messed up in some way. Yeah. Or lack of That's your cross to bury. Yeah. And so cross like, to carry. Yeah. yeah. So like he conforms you and frees your certain things and whatnot. It's really unfortunate if you're born a pedophile. I know. <laughs> Maybe because that, those are the ones that most cultures don't, well, some cultures do excuse, but thankfully, well, if you're, unless you're in Hollywood. Epstein. Epstein, Nickelodeon. Yeah. <laughs> all of Disney Hollywood. Channel, yeah, all of Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's only, it's only for the, more upper people. There are no people, it's allowed, and they hush hush about each other with each other. But for the rest of us, we're like, mm, stay away from my kids. Yeah. How did it get so powerful? You know? How did a couple of <laughs> kid kitty touchers get so powerful? In some way, I was surprised some of them didn't start out that way, but it came more that they became more corrupt. If you get what I'm saying. Because there's way Okay, so could, yeah. that's that's the thing. Like how can like a low level like you know the guy the agnostic like yeah. i don't know what kind of god what's god right like how can that guy yeah. ignoring the signs of god yeah. lead to like all these things of like plan of evil schemes disobey the parents right, right. murder you know that's the whole premise right like mm -hmm. the disobedience of one man caused this oh like this whole thing to right, be a mess right like how can it tumble down like that from mm -hmm. like an innocent well, there may not be. I mean, I mean, you can even think of like, even like as a kid. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I thought, like, I went, I read uh, myths when I was seven, and I thought the Greek gods and the Egyptian gods were probably gods. I was like, well, how would they be gods in the same place? I was like, unless Ra is being driven by Helios. I was trying to like, put it together as a kid, and I was like, oh, I don't get this. And then eventually, I was like, I guess. Then I tried to capture Hermes because I read this kid's book. I was like, oh, if you see a wind passing, that's Hermes. So I lose my kid brain. I was like, oh, when the wind passes, the wind. Everything that passes, it hits something and stops because, you know, I can't go through walls. So I was like, if I stand by the wall when the wind's coming, it will hit the wall and I'll be able to hug it. And then it'll turn to Hermes and I'll send a, Zeus, a message to Zeus. So that's what I tried to do. The wind hit me, hit the wall, nothing happened. So I was like, eh, can't prove it, but I can't disprove it, but I'll ignore it. I can't, it's not accessible, it's not something I can know. So then gradually as I got older, I was like, hmm, 
when I turned eight, I was like, hmm, maybe the sun is God. And I was like, oh, looking at because I was like, I, it lets me see everything and it's really big and whatever. So <coughs> eventually I was like, hmm, maybe the earth is, maybe everything is God. And I was like, wait, but that would make me God. I'm like, I'm obviously not God, so that's stupid. Like, that's, that's how I am as a kid. But it's just like, I have lots of kids. Really, like, I have such a childhood. Like, then eventually I read the Bible. Yeah, kids like, don't think like that. Yeah. Uh, Kids usually don't think like that. Oh, well, I don't know. But I mean, when I was I seven, never, I never thought okay. like that. Okay. But then again, because I was reading meth and I was reading chemistry, and I was like, how would it feel like if I lived inside of an atom? Like, it was like. Cause yeah, well, like, seven year old <laughs> kids don't read chemistry textbooks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was my mom's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah, it was a good thing, yeah. In fact, I told Basha how, like, all that, like, the set theory book I read, the chemistry book, and the mythology, all that became, like, a foundation for how to think through things, progress, and it was like, so older. funny, though. <laughs> You're like, yeah, all seven year old read chemistry, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, when I was seven, I was I was trying to fit together like two di- like different shaped Lego blocks. See, I was I didn't have toys. I think that's also why I wasn't I never played. I only played outside in nature. Like I like to play outside and move around and dance and sing and talk to people. And even then, I wasn't much of a talker. I would, I'd be entertaining, obnoxious, and sing or whatever. And most of the time, I was quiet, just looking around and then playing around with stuff. But in my head, I was like pondering and stuff and reading things and trying to figure things out. And then like letting things work in the back of my mind and be like, hmm, what's going on? What does this mean? And how does this work? So, this is what's happening, and if I could, could see how all those influences are still playing out now, like the mythology gave me a sense like, okay, there are, what, what, what kind of uh exists, and how does this work, what does it do? Set theory gave me a sense of like categorization, what fits with us? Okay, these numbers fit with this set too, so certain things overlap, you see how that works with like when I think about these ideas are similar to this, family resemblance or whatever, then you see um, chemistry gave me a sense of like different actions, interactions, and stuff like that, and ways and things show up, so all that help me progress and learn stuff so but my point is i guess there's a way in which like even the agnostic we because there's a way in which i mean rob puts it as this teach your children mm-hmm. that's a feature there's a right verse it's like teach yeah. your children remind them that this stuff happened like tell the story of like the exodus all that stuff so there's a way in which you're brought up in okay this, you, okay you yeah so you're saying that yeah. uh one tiny deviation of yeah. disobedience or willful blindness mm-hmm. can lead to more from like passing it down yes like i mean like, i told you that with the culture where it's like oh your dad's like i worship trees they're like oh hey we worship trees they're like okay shinto or something like, Shintoism. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what it was like, Shintoism, but yeah. you know something like that so now you yeah. pass it on generation Shintoism, generation. like i think they worship spirits and everything yeah yeah it's almost yeah. like an animism pantheism yeah not pantheism well, it's like more it's like, everything it's like, is like different like, yeah it's like an animism because it's like yeah. it's differentiated okay, it's not yeah, like yeah, uh, unity yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah there's no unity yeah so it's very, it's very fascinating. And it, it kind of, you, you, make, you get how people get these things. A lot of people, because that's why I want to like make this map of how the mind works, mm-hmm. or how different ideas work. Because it's like, there's a way in which things are working and, and how do you tune it to get like the technical layout, the way in which things actually play out as an organism, of how reality is and how to mind things. These are things I'm trying to tease out. Because these are things I've always been tracking since I could like just, not just talk, but like just, well, I guess talk, but like just interact with people. Mm-hmm. Whenever somebody's talking, like, hmm, this is how your mind's working. Or okay, what you're saying. so. Yeah. You, we worship trees, we start worshiping trees, and yeah. it leads to like Shintoism, and how does that lead to having sex with children? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of that, I mean, it, with that, that's like, some of those, like, um, some people may be corrupt like that, mm-hmm. who may make that, they'll try to legitimize that. Uh, or some of them may also be like, oh, maybe you're curious, like when, like when you're a kid and you explore sexuality, you know, like me and some of my friends who like, we all talk, we all have stories like, you know, whether we're molested or whatever, things that you do with other kids, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a feature in like of human beings that are very exploratory. Like there's a way in which without being socialized and civilized, you're pretty much open to pretty any and any and everything. Mm-hmm. So if you have a culture or you have a person who's like, I never got a sense that this was wrong, mm-hmm. or rather even if it was wrong, it didn't I didn't accept it like it didn't strike me as like wrong. It, right, just, like, right. it feels good too at that. So I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And then you keep doing it. And I mean look at and then you can use the yeah. culture yeah. that's already there to justify your actions. Yeah, yeah. Or even if you like, but it wouldn't be like this intellectual justification. It's just like, oh, you just kind of settle. Because a lot of yeah, things are just settling happens, into stuff. Yeah. They just happen. Yeah, that's what happened to the Nazis. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That the, whole... Yeah, like the Germans are like, oh, this is normal. Like, the, like that's what that's, that's one of the things that scare people. They're like, these are regular people. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. And the church, like most of the church got behind it. Yeah. Or they, they kept quiet, not yeah, yeah, behind yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like, it's very easy for things to just go wrong if you don't make what's most important what's most true first and if you don't seek that at well as well it's like okay i'll try to align with it and that's why you get like um there's a reason why people look at confucius and like certain people who are just like let me because there's a way in which by aiming for that they get they approximate this that's why people like even c.s lewis if you read uh, yeah you show me that what was that what works there except for the Tao, the way and how like you could find like this sense of like values that come from different cultures and 
like ten, generally there's the same paint palette yeah like values that you can paint the picture of life yeah with and stuff so it's just fascinating it's one of those fascinating things that I mean fool's gold real gold baseline deviation and uh, ability to become more extreme and corrupt mm. and yeah these are things I want to explore and lay out but I feel like when people are talking about these things they don't actually try to like think it through and lay it out and try to organize and go through it they just kind of it's just all reactivity right and just quick dismissals but yeah do you want to go to two or you want to end it do, do you have to go to your wife or something yeah maybe we should end it but um anything else that's sticking out that we need to talk about uh I guess this whole they know well enough God's righteous decree that people who do such things deserve to die notice like they know the decree mm-hmm. keep in mind they mean they know there's a difference between knowing and accepting mm-hmm. or knowing and caring you see like yet not only do they keep doing them which is so interesting but they applaud those who do the same like mm-hmm. and it's like uh, let me put it this way there's a, there's a way in which like when you're good you encourage good when you're bad you encourage bad this is how it is mm-hmm. you know there's, this, there's a way in which like you try to you want to feel justified in your thinking not even just justified because sometimes it's not even that because we're very we tend to be very rational so we tend to think in terms of like how do we justify this but mm-hmm. most people don't actually work like that most people are just like let me just work and I build momentum mm-hmm. or it's like an amplification if you right. will mm-hmm. or like um, like leading to like you know or like you know um, I mean in some ways we even do that with each other like oh like when we talk about justify it's like oh let's amplify the fact that we want to justify you see like the way of thinking in terms of justification so there's a way like any feature of mine can be amplified can be like just yeah. encouraged and perpetuated yeah. it's kind of like like I told my friend today um, whenever you if I sold you this I'm not just selling you this I'm also selling you the nature of selling so we keep selling as an activity it sounds weird but yeah. you, it's really it's really obvious what I'm saying it's, not, it's really not that difficult it's like if I send you a text message on my phone I'm perpetuating the the act of activity texting. of texting yeah it sounds oh, like you're like normalizing. Yeah, I'm normalizing oh, okay. it, but it also perpetuates. Like it keeps it going. Right, 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 so everything you do ends up like there's one which you establish right, a pattern right. that keeps going. Right. If you send me a text message, I'm not gonna send like, you a uh, message in pigeon or something. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna, oh, therefore we're not texting anymore. Like just yeah. it's, it's not like a ladder you climb up and then right, throw it away. Right, right. Yeah. So there's a way in which lots of activities. There's a way in which by visual starting and keeping it going, you extend itself across time, mm. and then you might even be able to bring it back, especially with ideas. Ideas don't die. In some ways, ideas are like spirits. Mm. Like that's what my friend Joshua puts it up. Like yeah, you know. Yeah. No ideas. Our spirits, they don't die. I mean, okay, yeah, because yeah. it perpetuates a diff- yeah, different through, people. Yeah, different, mater- yeah, different material, like you know, okay. it comes to like different medium, like the software. It comes to, like you have the software, you can play it on different hardware mm-hmm. and let it re- express itself as software. Joe Rogan said, like technology is being uh, born into the world mm-hmm. through human beings, yep. or like the sexual organs of ideas. Yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah. So it's it's, it's very fascinating. Uh, Feature, because these are things I was thinking about. I was because I don't remember. I had to stop today. Ah, I just gotta remember. What about um? I remember it was like something about um, the nature of. I guess poss- possibility, mm-hmm. and how like if you say ah, I, wish I, I should have written it down. I always do this stuff. Like I say things, I know like I don't write them down, or like I'll think things. I'm like, huh? Something will pop up. I'm like, hmm, I should have written that down later. But it was like it was kind of like I was basically I realized that fundamentally everything comes down to a power, basically a god, you know, yeah, a potency. Like, it's like, that's what makes things happen. Like, I was thinking of a law. Oh, it was a law. Yeah, I was thinking about law. Okay, um, you have, like, laws on the course of stuff. I could write something down, but behind every law is a gun in, the, in this country. Because it's like, if you don't follow the law, oh, we'll say, come to court. I won't come to court. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to put a gun on you and get you to come to court. Or if you're going to refuse, we'll shoot you. Or we'll just force you and put you on. There's always force. There's always power behind it. It's yeah. power to, like, you know, undergird. So that's why when people, like, um, but Foucault has been like, oh, power. But it's like, but power is okay. And also be do, used to be do good. You know, like I say, right without might is ineffective. But it's like, right stolen is might. But might can just be whatever. Mm-hmm. You can use might to do wrong and so on. So it's just it like, sword. yeah, it's just one of those things. So um, these are things I'm sometimes I like ponder and try to like uh, have sense because sometimes I feel like people try to, um, yeah, there's so many different basically stuff out, but these are, some, these are some of the stuff I was like noting today about how like um, if when you're thinking logically and stuff, you're always tracing it to some sort of potency when you're trying to figure out what's actually happening. Mm. So, okay, so I guess like one thing worth pointing out is um, verse 16, okay. Romans 1 verse 16. Yeah. For I am not ashamed of the good news since <laughs> this is God's powerful means of bringing salvation to everyone who keeps on trusting. It's the not ashamed part. Yes, that, yes. That yeah. sticks out. It's like 
that implies that people try to shame you for it. Not only that, yeah. you cannot be ashamed of any of it. Yes, yes. Like, like, like the, the, the fact the, the, that God is right. a male. Yeah, yeah. That like yeah. he he, well, he masculine. yeah masculine. Yeah, yeah. That Eve is a freaking rib. You yeah. know, like yeah. the, everything. It's you have to accept it. It's a yeah. premise. Yeah. You cannot be ashamed of it. Yeah. And then you know, like the the way that you're addressing God as Yahweh now. Yeah. Like all of that is the non shameness of it. Like, yeah. It has to be all accepted. Yeah. It can't be sugar coated. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's why. I mean, I think those are verses I was like um. The Holy Spirit makes you bold. Yeah. And Jesus was very bold. If I go to my friend who's like an agnostic, he's like, oh yeah, Jesus is a very interesting example of masculinity because he's like, he's gentle, but he's bold. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, um, you know, just like, he just has yeah. booth. Like, meekness. Like, yeah. Humility. Yeah. The the sword sheet. Yeah, yeah, the sheet, yeah, meekness, yeah. And even humility, because like humility, is like, um, in biblically, is more like, um, you exalt what's greatest. Mm -hmm. Meekness is not self-deprecation. Most people yeah. think, oh, if I'm humble, yeah. I'm like, I hate myself, I'm so stupid. But that's not humility. Yeah, that's yeah. just hating yourself. Yeah, yeah. Self-deprecation. In fact, that's cheapening work yeah. you don't have a sense of work yeah that's a failure yeah. of the translation i think or yeah. the mutation of the word meek yeah into something that yeah yeah because you could say god wants you to be quality so you can exalt him as the quality that's in fact that's basically this, this whole the whole point of view mm -hmm. you're made my image i'm the ultimate quality the most important so be important and express my importance and if you don't you depreciate it mm -hmm. you make in fact you become more of you when you're with god mm -hmm. That's why he wants to make you great. That's why he blesses you and stuff like that. It's like, um, there's a way, like, I mean, think of it. You fell. There, there was a height. You fell. Mm. You already fell from some height, the rank of order, in terms of, like, greatness and quality. And now you're trying to achieve, and, like, there's, now there's a war. You're trying to fight and climb back up to the top to overcome the darkness that has, like, usurped your authority, usurped the quality that you're supposed to have. Mm. And, in fact, uh, there's this girl. I think I, sh I shared her video, but she was talking about how she learned. Um, when... David was talking about um, God anoints his head. He's a sheep, and God anoints his head with oil. Apparently, she's saying, um, I don't have any research to say, but she's saying, like, shepherds, they anoint sheep with oil, and the oil, like, uh, I, don't, I think it goes in their ears and gets rid of flies, like, it blocked out flies. Because, like, apparently, flies would go into the sheep's ears and, like, torture them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. And I was also punning. I'm like, hey, Lord of the Flies, uh, Beelzebub, like, they just call Lord of the Flies, and, like, you know, demons torture you, give you mm -hmm. bad thoughts and emotions, mm -hmm. like, oh, you're a sinner, you're accuser, you're bad, you're bad, you're stupid, mm -hmm. or do this, do this, do this, like, they're troubling you. But when God anoints you, you see, as the anointed one, the Messiah, clears, yeah, clears you of you. the flies, yeah, the pot. exactly, and sets you right. Peace, like peace. Mm -hmm. You know, he's your shepherd. He's a good shepherd, and that's what pastor's supposed to be. That's what I'm aiming to be when he's like a, he's like Peter. Do you, Did, like, do you remember the passage where what, what were we gonna say? But this one I was gonna say was important. But I'll yeah, go ahead. Like, he said when Jesus was like Peter, do you love me? And he's like yes, Lord, feed my sheep. You know what I mean? So it's very interesting. Like that's basically the meaning of a pastor. Wait, wait, sorry. How does that relate to the anointing? Because Jesus is the anointed one, and he anoints us, you know, because we're all imitating him. Okay. So, like, and then for those sheep that need to be anointed, if you're following the what this research I gave you, it's like, get the bad thoughts and stuff out of them so they can be protected and okay. shepherded. So, the oil that's that he's pointing on to, what, Peter? The oil? Uh, I mean... I guess I just like make a metaphor, but I gave you the example of what the girl said, right? You remember? Mm -hmm. Like he, she said, the shepherds actually put oil. They yeah, anoint yeah. their sheep with yeah. oil, and it clears their ears of flies and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't understand, but so I was saying, okay, when Jesus is the anointed one, he's like the one. Yeah. Like he anoints us, he appoints us for different things and stuff, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, we're also his sheep too. Mm -hmm. So he's like also clearing our ears. We're also asking us to go for other people as mm -hmm. you know disciples oh, okay, and so on. Okay. So we're anointing other people. Yeah. And clearing up their ears too. Yeah. So, you know, so right. we can process, we can work well and hear the shepherd, the ultimate shepherd. The, the anointing or the, the act of pouring oil onto yeah. the sheep yeah. was baptism, right? Like when John the Baptist baptized him, he became anointed. Oh, no, he's already anointed yeah, at that point, yeah. but like he's, it's like the symbolic. It was like symbolic cleansing. It was like yeah. a, just kind of like a, you're, re you're being reborn, like yeah. you're born again of water and spirit remember i think jesus said that he's like you must be born again of water and spirit so like um and it's very interesting because like uh they have different symbols to them and you can even tie it back to like the beginning of genesis where it's like the water is like the chaos so it's like uh, you're yeah, kind yeah. of you come out of the chaos you're renewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. why is that necessary why is i haven't been baptized yeah why is that necessary for my salvation 
Really? I'd have to look that up. I don't really know. Because I know I got baptized, and I guess I'm also remembering, is there something in Leviticus where certain things were watered or, like, you know, cleansed that way? I'm trying to remember. Well, the, the but, anointing but would be, like... Yeah, no, because anointing was for the kings. You know, like, okay. uh, the Saul was anointed to become king, and then yeah. prophets were also being anointed and stuff like that. So yeah. Like, for the point of well, the what what John the Baptist represented, what we talked about last yeah, week, yeah, he's a priest, yeah, he's the, a priest, yeah, from actually the Levite line, which yeah, is yeah. pretty mind blowing, yeah, and then Jesus from the line of David, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, when he anoints, in fact, him, in fact John leaves in his in his, in his, in his uh, Elizabeth Mary's yeah. cousin, they're cousins. Oh wait, sorry, what? John and Jesus are cousins. Did you know that? Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Remember when Mary went to see Elizabeth and like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. when the baby like heard your voice, it leaped in my stomach. It was like happy. I felt like it was happy. It was like, oh Jesus. Mm-hmm. So even from even when he was a baby, like when he was in the womb, like John was like, yay Jesus. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So John, baptizing him is, like a Levite priest saying, yeah, this sheep is good for yeah, yeah. sacrifice. Yeah, it's, it's clean. It's like because yeah, yeah. coming. John was almost saying to Jesus, like, this is a redundancy. I don't have to do yeah. this. Like, you, you you should be doing this for me. Right. But he's just like, no, fulfill all righteousness. I'll, I'll follow the procedure. Like, it was like, a, it's almost like a... There's a rule thing. Uh, it's there's a like, thing set up already. Yeah, yeah, yeah It has like, to be followed. Yeah, yeah, you have to follow it. And it makes right. it... Because it, it has a sense of, like, it's just... It's just... I don't know. It's kind of like... Like, if the president is taking a, uh, a plane, right? Going to the airport or whatever, they just have to go to airport security. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. Like, they can just be like, I'm the president. Obviously, I don't have anything on me. I'm not gonna, you know, you know what I'm saying. But it's like they don't really go through it. I don't. I don't I, you know what? I, I know what you mean. mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of something. I'm, I can't think of an example. Yeah, but yeah. there's a way in which, like, even people who are very high, when they're like going through how things are set up, they will follow the rules. They'll follow it. They will occasionally. But there's a way in which, like, um, like God, like you could say, becomes lenient with His rules for us, but He doesn't exactly violate them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Like with, like with the whole divorce thing, like he was like, well, technically, I never wanted anyone to divorce, right. but because your hearts are hard, your, um, your hearts are hard, <laughs> your hearts are hard. <laughs> uh, I allow divorce, mm. but you know, it's like okay. except for cheating. Don't so, divorce. Yeah. I mean, so both the physical baptism needs to happen. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit baptism. Yes, which is like a baptism of fire, if you will. I haven't had both any of neither. I mean, so I'm going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you're good. Not by, not by, not by works, by faith, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are just, these are, these are procedures that will come. I mean, the Holy Spirit will definitely come. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are people who probably got the Holy Spirit before they were baptized or who were like, before they even like water baptized. I mean, I, this, yeah. here's the thing. I might have been baptized by the Holy Spirit and I was like, it was probably like, really weak (laughs) how do i know because like when you know when the incident happened in my life i did felt a sense of peace that everything was gonna be okay right right and it aligns with a lot of what a lot of people say like peace okay okay i mean what what were you thinking what were you thinking anything when that happened or just happened after you got rid of it after after like the third go around um i was like yeah i mean i'm gonna be all right Hmm. you know like i'm not gonna you know, hmm. perish. Hmm. Like everything's gonna be okay. Hmm. And After, I just no, stopped. Were you on shrooms when you said this, or what? Uh, yeah, I was still on shrooms, but like I wasn't high anymore. Okay. Yeah. I did drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is so like, and then it, it's like, and then I teased it out later mm-hmm. that like there was a voice, some sort of knowing. Knowing, okay. Like, not a voice. Okay. A knowing that it, it to- told me... Right, right. ...that you're going to be okay. Okay. Mom, are you hearing this? Uh, uh-huh. He said, even when he was on shrooms and, like, uh... Yeah, and in, in that moment, like, yeah. after my third... <laughs> after my third attempt, yeah. um, I knew if I kept going, like nothing would change i would be okay like and then there's like it's really really small i i i thought about this later but then i felt the sense that that small knowing was telling me that you're gonna be okay now it's like peaceful like it it wasn't like really peaceful it was just like okay fine i won't do it again you know like i'll be okay like so, maybe that's the holy baptism. 
I don't know, but... I mean, what do you think? I mean, you started laughing, so I don't know. <laughs> he has already got it. He just doesn't know yet. Uh, it's okay. already there. That's like my friend Trey, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's just the... Cause, yeah, it's already there. Cause, because while you guys were talking, yeah. I've been listening. Yeah. I look at you and I smile. You didn't see me. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah, it's already there, but you just don't know yet. Okay. Yeah, because the thing is... Cause, but it's going to manifest. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's going to manifest in you because yeah. right now, all you're thinking about is knowing Jesus. Yeah, yeah. That's, you are craving for him. Yeah, I am. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. You are craving for him like being hungry or being thirsty and you want water to drink. Mm -hmm. That's how much you are craving for him now. Yeah. Well, so I feel like it's not enough. It's not enough. Yeah. That you need more. Yeah. yeah. See? Uh -huh. That's you know, how many people actually have that? Like people who don't act who never like you know, the people who hear about Jesus, they don't they don't become like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's the only spirit that draws you to him. In fact it's only but I think there's a verse that says only the Holy Spirit can make you say Jesus is Lord. Yes. Yeah. Like you, you like yeah. if not you just because anyone can just be like, Oh Jesus is Lord or not. Mm -hmm. And you know? not to really feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And even the Bible, if the Holy Spirit don't give it to you, you will read the whole Bible but you still will not understand it. Yeah. You don't get it. Yeah. But if the Holy Spirit is in you, it will give you the understanding. Yeah, and you know, the I, don't, I don't open it up to you that you want it, and exactly. that you'll keep waiting for it, and it'll come. Right. You'll keep searching, mm -hmm. especially through fellowship, because like right. you clarify things for me, and I could, like even like you may think like you don't teach me anything, but no, like Robert, you'll say I'm like, oh okay, I never thought about it, or you'll ask questions, but you ask really good questions, because it don't like for me, I'm just like, I can't, I can't right. think in my head anymore, so it's like I need something external to like right. draw things out for me to explore. Mm -hmm. But like my pastor would mm -hmm. tell me things like. Well, you, it's still you that choose to declare Jesus as your Lord, that you're a sinner and that he died for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You have to accept him first. Yeah. yeah. Because he said he's behind the door, he's knocking on your heart. Yeah. Open your heart for him so he will come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to seek him. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. once I confess, mm -hmm. then the Holy Spirit will renew my and mm -hmm. then help me understand. Yes. yes. And it's not before. No. Like, the Holy Spirit won't be like, accept me. But at the same time, there's also a work in which he's, you could say, he's wooing you. He's drawing you in. Mm -hmm. He's drawing you. Like, there are people, like, there's some people who, their testimony is like, I always felt like God was like, like, when that happened, I was like, in high school, I was like, okay, you're always there with me. Like, there, lots of people, in fact, that Japanese woman I sent on the group, she was like, um, she used to worship most different gods, because she's like, oh, we'll cover all my bases. So, in case this God fails, at least this God yeah, got yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So, she was like, and that makes sense. It's like, it's practical. But I mentioned when she heard about Jesus, like, oh, Jesus the only word ever. She said it stuck to her. I, think I, I, I saw that same video. Yeah, I haven't finished the whole testimony, but like, she was a Buddhist and stuff. But uh, and then she started like she saw she had a dream of all the gods, her ancestors, and the Buddha, all of them, like calling to her, like, yeah, you don't have to leave us, you know, whatever. And she saw Jesus crop into her as a light. And when she tried to lead to Jesus, they all turned into like demons. Mm -hmm. They all became very scary, and she started freaking out and stuff. And then you know, Jesus helped her. And then apparently, uh, I haven't finished her testimony, but I went halfway through, and she said um, she saw. She went to this woman who apparently was like fasting and praying for her. She was like tired and like oh something or was kind of sick or whatever from it, and then she prayed for that woman and the woman was okay, and then eventually she helped her mom, she helped her grandma, you know, all sorts of different people. I haven't finished it, but that's the point I got to. But yeah. it's, just, it's just so fascinating when you listen to different people's testimonies. It's like my my yeah. hunger is yeah. really stemming from yeah wanting to yeah help my mom and yeah. Yeah. my wife yeah, but me like the like it says in the bible the more you read the more you're convicted of your sin yeah. so the more i look how there's it's so much stain i'm like do i really love them do it you know like i start to question like how am i gonna do this i it has to be jesus like he has to change me for me to do it <laughs> so it's like i start to become like i start to rush god and i don't want to do that but like i mean i think some of that is not just i think some of that is an enemy yeah like it's not because because you know there's one in which, like, uh, when demons, because when I was in the hospital, that's what this thing was doing with me. Like, I'm like, being like, oh, you're saved. It's like, well, you don't believe you're saved. So I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess I don't believe I'm saved. Maybe that's why I'm struggling. You. Yeah, manipulating. You start, like, doubting your, yeah, what you actually yeah. believe. And it's like, no, like, if you're steady here, like, no, I know this. Like, I accept it. Because it's not, because if not, because I guess there's a key. The, the video I sent you with uh, Johnny Chang, he said, focus on Jesus. Whenever you're doubting, it's like, focus on him. That's the faith. Don't turn into, like, how am I actually thinking? How am I actually thinking? No, he said, don't do that. Direct your mind, focus on him. Hundred percent. Yeah, and that studies you. That so when, guides you. When people you. say focus on him or look at his face, what does that mean? Well, it's like you could say, say oh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> when people say look at his face, nobody can look at Jesus. Yeah, face. no. <laughs> yeah. You can't. You can't. Yeah, you're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And because even when he appears to you, you can only see 
him as human form and you can see that um his human standing there but too bright for you to even look mm -hmm. you can't yeah you know even an angel you can't even look at an angel's face mm -hmm. so if you can't look at angel's face how can you look at jesus's face right unless that angel appears to you as human if that angel don't appear to you as human and they appear to you in their angel with her form you cannot look at them okay. you know so if someone say look at jesus face or look up to jesus looking up to jesus is like let me use an example like you have a father mm -hmm. and you know how good person your father is kind, caring, hard working and everything. And because of that, you want him to be your role model, mm -hmm. right? So it means and you want to follow your father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. So when people say, look yeah. up to Jesus, mm -hmm. you want to, you have to follow Jesus' okay. footsteps. So that's how you center your mind. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Cause that's all, remember he's yeah. the first Adam. Oh, he's the second Adam. Mm -hmm. He's become the pattern for all humanity mm -hmm. to unfold as, mm -hmm. you see, he's also the second Adam and we're the Eve so it's like oh, we have to obey our husband mm -hmm. or future husband because right, right, right you know stuff like that so there's a feature in which um mm -hmm. yeah so it's just fascinating because he also points out he's also the image of the father he said if you have seen me you have seen the father so it's like by conforming to him you look more like him and you become more like him and by becoming more like him you're in him and if you're in him you're in the father which is why he says like in John he's like so they will be in me as I am in you there's, see how these ideas are all like linking like, he, mm -hmm. like they, it's like variations on the same theme yeah. but like in different patterns different structures to explain to you certain things and that's how the Bible is set up it's like a fractal mm -hmm. like a very complex when you guys pattern. finish anointing for me or okay. I, okay. if I'm anointing or not anointing in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and okay. pray for him and ask the Holy Spirit to <laughs> and beg the Holy Spirit yeah to burn inside his body okay to use his body as a fire okay 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 he should fill the holy spirit as fire burning inside of him yeah so he will crave for jesus more he will okay. pray for the holy spirit more that every step he would take he would think about god amen amen okay yeah yeah make sure you do that that's yeah I, I, mean, I, 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 used to, I used to be like that burn the it was, it's a great chaff. it's a great state to be yeah yeah it's a great it's a great state to be in honestly it's just, there's meditation none of that like just Orgasm, none of that. Like just, just nothing. Just yeah. there's nothing that beats that. Just being like this, completely addicted to Jesus. Thinking about him, thinking about the Bible, and you just always want to talk about him. And you just you're there, and you feel clean. I don't know how to explain it. Like just, I'm, I don't know how to explain it. But most people have never felt a sense of inner cleanness, yeah. clarity. That just like inside is light. You're just you're made out of light on the inside, and I want that. That's something I've craved. But it's like there's almost a problem. Like oh, I feel like I got in dark and murky. I may as well just give in. It's like if you if you ever. Oh, okay. This is nasty. But it's like if you ever like just smell like when you stink, and you're like and you're like you kind of just get used to it, like mm, okay, you just start okay. I guess I'll be right. used to it. It's kind of like that. people become like that with their darkness and their sin mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. You kind of just start loving the filth. Mm -hmm. But when you become clean, like oh man, man, this cologne is good. Oh dang, okay, mm -hmm. ooh, okay, it looks smooth. It's like, right. so nice. You see, but it's like it's not sustainable. It is sustainable. Yeah, you will, you will stay like that. But if you, if you, if, you, if, you if, if you no, if you keep to Jesus, it will keep going. Really? Yeah, you'll have. In fact, that's I always thought that was just like a state that people get, and then. I mean, you'll go through that. You'll have other emotions, of course, but it's like deep in the in the midst of it, you'll have that joy. That's why Paul was able to sing in prison after getting beat up. That's why he was able to sing after getting shipwrecked. That's why he was able to sing after people like they're hating on you and you know what I mean and calling him. You see what I mean? Like, so it's a sustainable thing. Yeah, like it, it, it carries you through. But if you start leaving God or whatever, yeah, yeah, it start, that obviously starts dying. Right, like that's the whole like him yeah. walking on water and then he yeah, yeah. he's away. like, yeah, no, save me, you know, yeah, yeah, because it's like you get caught up in the wind of the situation, which is like you could say like the randomness of like life. Or, right. I'm thinking like is, is a human ape even capable of like believing to a point that there's no doubt even by a gust of wind like when he's walking on water is that even possible i mean if we if you think about it, think peter could have watched jesus jesus didn't want to tell him to come if he couldn't have done it yeah that's why jesus said come but then he's like he said why did you fight, lose faith you have little faith why did you lose hope why did you die i'm right here and you you already stepped on the fact you, you already stepped on the water you're walking what made you think like you were just gonna sink mm -hmm. that's because you heard the wind look at me in fact, you can see that's the problem with all of us. It's like, just like, look at me. Well, it's more like, like yeah. sometimes it's like literally instinct. Like your yeah. body takes yeah. over. That's, that's why he says don't live for the flesh. Don't live by faith, not by sight. And this faith, like the faith in this situation is like, Lord, command me to come to you. It's like, I've never walked on water. I've never experienced anyone walking on water. I don't even, 
know how this works. I have no memories whatsoever, you see, like there's no regularity I can recall to that can give me a sense of like a, a potency or a rule that can activate to make this work out. But I'm seeing you do it, and so I'll try it, and then I'm going. And then as I'm going, oh, something I'm familiar with that usually scares me, wind is blowing, and wind blowing those, this is usually, notice how it's like, this is a tradition, when wind blows, usually bad stuff happens. Yet, you're forgetting that, keep in mind, there were previous verses where Jesus literally just calmed the storm. So you keep the context in mind, you see how, see how like, it was already set up, the, the Bible was written that way to like, show you like, okay, Jesus is already in control. It's almost like, it's almost like, because maybe you could argue like, Jesus allowed the wind to come like that, like, oh, let's time it. I know he's gonna walk on water, but then the wind will come, like, will you get scared knowing I can stop storms when I did it before? Yeah. While I'm standing here walking on water, while you're doing walking on water, and yet, I mean, look at the Israelites. It's human. Because they're always like, given to the body. Right. It defaults to like how our brains so, and our emotions work. Yeah, like I'm yeah. saying, like, yeah. it's human stuff. Yeah. Is it really possible to sustain it until we die? Yeah. You think so? No, I think you, well, I think you can. Like, uh, if you really, if you're very much like, it's not to say like you won't mess up, of course. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah. like, you'll probably sustain it like maybe 80% or 90%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it'll, 80% like, anyway, it's really high. Yeah, really. yeah, but I don't think like, it'll be like 100. But I'm saying like, in that situation with Peter, he could have done it. He could have easily walked from him. That's why Jesus told him to come. He wasn't like, ha ha, I knew you weren't going to make it halfway. You know, like, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 That would make the whole Bible invalid. <laughs> <laughs> ha, I was expecting you to pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ah, like I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the, the new Bible. Right, right. That's how he like ends it. Right. <laughs> it's like a satanic troll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's how Satan tries to make you feel like, like, oh, like he's actually gonna let you drown. You're only gonna walk like this much, and then you're gonna start yeah. drowning. Or he'll make it seem like, oh, remember that verse when Peter drowned? Jesus wanted him to drown. Mm. That's why he drowned. You see, like he just twists things to make you doubt. <laughs> well, he wanted to show. Peter, how powerful he is, yeah. and also to teach him to have faith. Yes, it's the same thing yeah. with like the the Abrahamic test to kill his son. Yeah, yeah. it's because, like how much faith do you have? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the beginning, Peter, Peter had faith because mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, I know you were Jesus, you walking on water, right, right? Right. You know, and if you command me to walk on water too, I could. Yeah. Mm. But when he was walking, he started being afraid. Mm. Yeah. He started losing faith. Yeah. That's why he started sinking. Yeah. And that's. That's Most concrete and metaphorical too. Yeah. Yeah. When you, know, you start well. losing faith, yeah. you look at Jesus, yeah. meaning yeah. looking at the example. Yes. Looking at the image that reveals his the footsteps. ultimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Following his footsteps. Mm. Yeah. That needs, to, that needs to be ingrained in here. Yeah. Here. Yes. In fact, that's because uh, that's why he wants to constantly read it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's like like because uh, that was when I saw getting lost. One of the things that started happening is I stopped reading the Bible. That was one of the main first things that happened. When I was in high school, because I used to read, I used to take the Bible to with me to school, like from my freshman year, I used to read it. Some this kid would make fun of me and call me a Jesus freak. Like he made fun of me to one of her, her friends, or yeah, his friends. And then I got some Starbursts, and I came in the class, and we're sitting next to him in Spanish class, and like I'm a Jesus fanatic. And then he just looked shocked, and he looked up, and he's like, Oh no, he heard me. And then like I was like, I, it was like no bad feelings. Then I was like, Open a Starburst, I'm like you want one? He's like, Okay, cool. So we started like eating a Starburst, like we was chilling. So I just, I just had, you know, say like turn the other cheek, you know, like I'll show you love, like even though you know you were insulting me and you heard that I like I got like you knew you heard that I got insulted mm. and you felt like you did something wrong I'm gonna mm. do good by you mm. so you'll get a sense of how Jesus is like I don't even have to tell him about Jesus I just found him to like get that sense it was like just a concrete illustration don't hide that I want to, I should talk to him about Jesus but you know right. so to make this point a little more concrete for me so right. when I look at Jesus yeah I follow his example. Yes. Um, what I see that he died for me, or what? 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 Yeah, what mental died, he... steps do you go through when you look okay. at Jesus? Okay. Hmm. That's a, that's actually a good book to write. That's something we could actually tease out. We can try to look that out. Like read the gospel. Like, what does it mean to look at Jesus? How does it mean to imitate him? How do you set it up? Because some of it is also picking up a cross too, and, which I have a book that says like uh, picking up a cross, which I haven't read yet. But it's just like um. Because when you were saying that, it made me think of like, uh, Jesus died for your sins. But by dying for your sins, he took on sin and sin died. So there's a way in which mm -hmm. you have to like let the part of you that's sinful die. Mm -hmm. And then be resurrected. Because right now you're resurrected with Jesus. When you take to him, you're resurrected. You're not. Because it's, it's, it's weird. Like, notice how there's a pain multiple ideas pulling different dimensions. On one hand, you're the resurrected 
mm-hmm. Jesus, but you're also carrying the cross. Yeah, yeah. So it's, just, it's interesting. And that's, I think that feature is what kind of confuses people when they read the Bible. Mm-hmm. They're like, what is going on? How do you balance this stuff? And it's like, mm-hmm. it's like, um, yeah, so, okay, so the part of you that lives in this world as a fallen creature and, and sin and all these different things and the challenges of the world and all this stuff and all of what you're going, that's the cross you're carrying. But the part of you that's spiritual, like that's the invisible, the hidden, that's the uh, permanent, that expresses and animates this, is resurrected. It's sitting in heavenly places. Mm. So it's just fascinating how like you like these. It's like it's almost like um. There's no. I'll think of like making a video game like this, where it's like multiple things are happening at different levels, in parallel. Where it's like, oh, if you're looking here, that's what's going on. Oh, if you're looking here, that's what's going on. But then also you can see how like they may fragment. I feel like there's a game like that, but I, I need okay. to look it up. Yeah, yeah. So it's, there's just things like that. Because there are ways to like concretize these things and make it easier for people to see and be like, okay. That would be a cool game. Yeah, yeah. How you can switch at will, different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. And you're playing the same game, but yeah. from a different. Yeah, where it's like, oh, on this level of carrying a cross, I'm failing, but it's like, I'm still sitting in heavenly places. Like, just get back up and keep going. Because there's a verse like, the righteous fall like seven times, get up seven times. Mm-hmm. It's just like, a, you know, it's like. Anyways, continue. Yeah, so that's kind of one of the ways I'm trying to illustrate. Because these are, these are, I have so many projects, but I, like, I mean, sometimes I wonder, like, is this. Why God's like, um, uh, well, different people tell me. Well, I'll say it's God. Like, God's told different people to tell me there are things He wants me to do. And I've always been like, because uh, sometimes I just get impatient. And I'm like, oh, I'll rush it and I'll do this. But then it's like, oh, if I mess this up, I know you'll make it do well. I was like, well, just stop messing up. Like, start <laughs> stop yeah, doing right. right. Start obeying. Like, bro, what are you doing? Like, you're wasting time. Like, right, right. <laughs> so, just obey. Focus yeah, yeah. on obeying. Don't focus on trying to game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah if I can game the system, I can figure out, like, oh, my problem wants me to do this. Oh, if I do this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Bro, you're just doing what you want at this point. And it's like, you're probably making it worse in some ways. <laughs> and then you, or, I mean, you can clean, always clean up the mess. He's always, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's just like, come on. Mm-hmm. But it's just kind of, sometimes you just make it take longer for yourself, too. Like, uh, I told you, uh, Jackie Stout's uh, letter of like, her husband. It was like, if you just started YouTube, you would have found your husband. But mm-hmm. she's like, no, I, I'm pursuing this guy despite all the red flags. I'm like imagining, <laughs> uh, I'm going off topic. Yeah, Anyways, go, go, you know, go, go, no, 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 it's fine. No, it's, it's just a joke. Uh, no, I want a joke. I want a joke. It's fine. <laughs> okay, fine. So, like, I'm imagining, like, all of the um, Yahweh as, like, an anime character. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen, like, um, Fate Stay Night? No. I heard Anyways, that. like, they portrayed Gilgamesh yeah. as, like, like a 15-year-old, slender, skinny, yeah. with, like, a leather jacket, blonde hair. Right. Like, Gilgamesh. Right. And he's, like, like a 15-year-old high school boy with, right, right. like, blonde flowing hair yeah wearing a leather jacket yeah like I'm, I'm imagining Yahweh to be like that on like you know skinny slender on a throne like, ima- like yeah right 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 <laughs> yeah, just chill like bro bro come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean yeah yeah it's, it's funny but yeah <laughs> it's hilarious but yeah it's just one of those things but it's so fascinating bro but yeah I mean that's that's all I can say right now because it's like it's just these things have to be teased out we, we can work through it when we read the gospel like we could be like a project we're working on yeah 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 and so, anyways, shall we pray? In yeah. Closing? Yeah, let's pray. Do you want to pray to somebody? You want me to? Do? Yeah, I got it. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this um, fellowship, this Bible study session with me and Tom, and allowing us to sharpen each other and getting each other's insights, teasing out the nature of what it means to walk in faith and carry our cross with you. Lord, um, I pray, Lord, that the word that we read today in uh, First Roman, I pray that you etch that in our hearts, the things that you said was eternal, your word, Lord. I pray that it comes alive um, in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds. And I pray that it continues to carry us forward as we walk in faith in you, Lord. And I pray that you continue to strengthen us through your word and you continue to Renew our minds, our hearts through your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we may continue in increasingly abide in you, Lord, to glorify your name, because that is the end state that, well, I don't know, <laughs> I just want to glorify your name more and more, and yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, um, and I pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, y'all, I guess that's it. I'll let you shut it off. Bye. Yeah. Woo! Is this the recording?